not gonna blow it up. You almost died, bro. <laughs> you just found that out. Wouldn't be the first time. Good evening, football fans. Welcome to Rockershaw Stadium here at the Brother Philip Memorial Sports Complex. We're pleased that you could all be here tonight, and we'd like to begin by reading a statement from the MHSAA. We want to remind you that the high school athletes playing tonight are friendly rivals as members of opposing teams. The visiting team is the guest of the home team and are expected to be regarded and treated as such. This is basically the theme of interscholastic athletics. The idea of friendly competition and sportsmanship. With this in mind, profanity and vulgar cheers are not only abusive to other spectators, but are a reflection on your school and community. This behavior will not be tolerated and may possibly cause your team or school to be placed on probation. People involved in this behavior will be asked to leave the area with no refund or re-entry and could be banned from future contests. The use of alcohol, drugs, and tobacco are forbidden at all Mississippi high school activities. Artificial noise makers, such as, but not limited to, air horns, bull horns, and sirens are not allowed at any MHSAA event. The officials working tonight are individuals who are assigned to administer the playing of the game according to National Federation rules. Their experience and integrity qualify them for their part in this friendly interscholastic contest. An attitude of sportsmanship should be reflected by all spectators, no matter their personal feelings of loyalty to one of the other teams in tonight's contest. A game manager's conference has been held with the administrators, coaches, and officials to emphasize good sportsmanship. Remember, sportsmanship begins long before the contest starts and lasts long after it's over. Thank you.
Now I'd like to uh, remind everyone that the concession stand is open, and if you'll notice on the uh, side of the concession stand is a white tent by the uh, a light pole. That is the drinks only, so if you're uh, just needing a cold drink, you don't have to uh, stand in line by the food. Thank you. Coaches coach, One, and the officials two, officiate. Three, four. Abusive and negative language directed at officials. Thank you. 
I'd like to introduce our officials uh, for tonight's contest. The uh, referee is Mr. Frank Simmons, umpire Chris Bagwell, linesman Charles Stone, line judge Ken Bond, field judge Kenneth Shelton, back judge Elton G. Cannon, on the clock Don Meter, and on the 25 second clock uh, Tony Keenan.
Marsh and Captains uh, are meeting at the center of the field. Representing the Brother Martin Crusaders is number three, Jeremy Singleton, number five, Trey Swilling, number 30, Patrick Willis, and number 57, Benjamin Willis. Representing U.S. St. Stanislaus Rocket Jaws, Captains tonight, number one, Owen Betts, number nine, Mason Farr, number 18, Mitchell Walk, and number 54, Tommy Reader. Like Brother Martin has won the toss and elected to defer their decision till the second half. Means they will be kicking off and the Rocket Charles will open the game with the uh, offense on the field. Yes, college it's a two. But the colleges haven't gone to the one point, but the NFL has gone to the one point. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not that I know of. Hey, Lenny, you saw. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I would respectfully ask that you all rise and remove your head covers, please. <coughs> uh, draw your attention to the 20-yard line on the scoreboard into the field. You'll see the four gentlemen out there. We're going to have a uh, joint prayer led by St. <coughs> Stanislaus student minister, Jared Mummy. And representing the uh, brother Martin will be Declan Randolph. So we'll have a joint prayer. Gentlemen. Oh, it's getting hoarse. Just got mine leaning back like that. No idea. Uh, without hearing the uh, portable mic. Thing? Thank you, indulgence. We're having te uh, technical difficulties. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, it is you who have given our teams the gifts of health and strength to compete tonight. May their physical efforts be worthy of your wonderful gifts. It is you who put into the lives of our players, dedicated coaches and trainers, who give them intense personal attention.
Here come the Brother Morton Crusaders in the Battle of Christian Brothers Schools here at St. To tell you a little bit more about that, let's go down to our field reporter for tonight's broadcast, Stephanie Altman. Stephanie? Tonight we have a special matchup between two brothers of the Sacred Heart schools. St. Stanislaus being the oldest brothers of the Sacred Heart establishment in America. Brother Martin isn't far behind though, opening just 15 years later, originally as St. Aloysius. Both schools have powerful offenses and I'm sure they have an even more powerful history behind them. Ken and Wade, back to you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And there's the brothers of the Sacred Heart Schools, five in our area. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's, it's a beautiful group of schools. I started my coaching career at Vanderbilt Catholic. I had the honor to coach there for four years. And then I also had a great honor to coach at Brother Martin High School in the city of New Orleans. And the Brothers of the Sacred Heart do it. Not only an excellent job uh, educating young men, but they do a great job spiritually in making sure that the young men are ready to go on in life in, in pursuit of, uh, of, of our Lord. Great weather for football, 74 degrees, a little bit of a chance of rain. We had about an inch and a half to two inches earlier. The field is a little bit soft, but it drains extremely well. It is a good uh, grass field. Winds, as you see, out of the southwest at only at about five miles an hour. Small chance of rain. Sky's looking good right now. I think we're going to have perfect weather for football. Well, I'll tell you what, I was down on the field earlier, Ken, and the, the field has great traction to it, so I, I don't think that's going to be a problem unless the skies open up, and hopefully they won't tonight. Well, we're just about set to go. You can see St. Stanislaus dressed in black and red. Brother Martin won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half. They will be kicking off. Owen Betts is back deep to receive a speedy senior. Does some kicking, plays both ways at times, and is a good, sure-handed receiver. So the Crusaders are ready to put this one into play, and high school football is underway. It will be Betts across the 10 with a little bit of running room. Had a hole, and the Crusaders closed it quickly as he gets across the 20 out to the 23-yard line. A return of 16 yards, and we are about to see one of the finest quarterbacks in the nation, Miles Brennan, number 12, completed 58% of his passes this year, but he was last year the 4A Player of the Year in the state of Mississippi having completed 5,797 yards. He can throw it and will throw it on almost every down. They have a running game, too, and Brennan on first down goes to the air, and Darius Pittman on the catch and some positive yards gained. Key players. I'll tell you what, some of the uh, key players tonight to watch are Owen Betts, who we just saw uh, catch the ball in the kickoff, Darius Pittman, who just caught the ball on that quick screen really fast. You'll see him play two ways tonight, and Chase Rogers has caught a lot of passes within the past three weeks, and he's extremely hot, and there he is right there catching that pass. Yeah, there's Rogers for the first down to move the chains, and Chase Rogers is the favorite target of Miles Brennan. Take a look at some of the defensive players to watch right here. Matthew Clapp, that's a familiar name. And I tell you what, the corners have to stop the receivers. Jeremy Singleton and Trey Swilling, two uh, lockdown corners you're going to see tonight play well for Brother Martin. Well, there you see Brennan with a no-huddle offense escaping pressure, has a man deep, and Pittman can't pull it down. He had the defender beat, but the pass was just a little underthrown because Brennan was under pressure. Great recovery right there by uh, number six, Joseph Blair. He came out of nowhere to make sure he knocked that ball away. He needed to try to get his head around a little bit so he wouldn't get an interference call, and he evaded the interference call with a very great play right there on that deep ball. Last year, Brennan, Miles Brennan, completed 70% of his passes, and he's got some very tall receivers. He's tall himself as he tosses one out left side. Harrison Brewer on the catch, very close to the first down, but a flag is down, and there's your first penalty flag of the evening. Well, I'll tell you what, that uh, St. Stanislaus offensive line is a brand new rebuilt line from this year. And uh, they graduated five guys last year who are off playing college football right now. Looks like it's in the area where they might have a holding penalty. Frank Simmons is going to look over things and give us a call. There's your call, holding penalty. 
Frank Simmons is our referee, and the referees are from the Gulfport area, all from the Mississippi State Association. One of the, one of the things that you have to be able to look at, Brennan, is last year's number, 70.3 complete average. And I said before the game started, he threw for over 5,000 yards. He was the nation's leader. And he was only a sophomore, Ken. 64 touchdowns. He's being recruited as a junior by so many people. Cal has already made him an offer. Troy, South Alabama, Cincinnati, Kentucky have made offers. And I can't tell you, including LSU, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, how many big power schools are in to try to get him interested in their program as a junior. You see his escapability. Look at that. And he wisely just throws it away as the pressure was finally unloaded. A late flag is thrown. A late flag thrown at the 15-yard line back where Miles Brennan was trotting back to the huddle. Well, I think what you're going to see here is you're going to see intentional grounding, okay? But I'll tell you what I was impressed with right there was the uh, escapability, the great footwork that you can see uh, by Brennan. And you can see the head football coach there, Coach Connie's from uh, uh, St. Santa's Law, so arguing his point that there was a receiver in the area. We'll see if they pick the flag up. I kind of doubt it, though. But I tell you what, impressive, as I said, impressive footwork uh, on the part of Miles Brennan right there. So that should be a loss of down in Federation rules where they're going to mark it off from the previous spot. Coach Connedy's in his uh, fourth year, second year as a head coach, spent two years as the offensive coordinator here at St. Stanislaus. But Bill Connedy's did a great job last year getting the Rocket Shaws to the state semifinals of 4A football here in the state of Mississippi. He's really an offensive wizard, understands the throwing game real well, and also uses a lot of option in the run game, which he exploited a lot last year. Maybe we'll see some of that again tonight. But you brought up a good point. Last year, Miles Brennan was quarterbacking behind an all-senior offensive line, five starters that had started together for three solid years. So they graduate off that senior class, and he's got a brand new group of Jonathan Frederick, Mark Cook, J.D. Luffy, Michael Shira, and Brandon Tardivu. I'm glad you could pronounce that name. I had to ask before the game. <laughs> Thank you, Tardivu. <laughs> exactly. And those guys, have, this will be their fourth game under their belt, so they're coming of age, and they'll do real well the rest of the season as they grow and mature. And I know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Miles Brennan will appreciate that greatly. Well, after the officials sort all of this out, you're looking at third down and 20 at the 28-yard line. Third down and 20. Actually, they move it back to the 15-yard line. Brennan, you can see, experience doesn't get rattled out of the pocket, doesn't mind running, throws a nice ball, but way overshoots Owen Betts, who was near it but well covered also on the play. Well, that was one of the keys of the game, talking to Coach Bonice prior to the game and all week about what Brother Martin had to do in order to have success tonight. And one of the things they had to do was to be able to get pressure on uh, the quarterback, Miles Brennan, and to make sure that they cover downfield. And St. Stanislaus is real simple. We're going to talk about this when Brother Martin takes the field on offense soon is stop the run, especially from Bruce Jordan Swilling. Miles Brennan, the quarterback, is your punter, but it's a bad snap, and he's just going to have to throw it away so he can avoid a safety back there, and he does throw it away, and that means Brother Martin is going to have absolutely excellent field position. We're going to see St. Stanislaus tonight do a lot of punting out of their offensive formation. You'll see uh, Miles Brennan do the punting straight from an offensive formation. I don't know if that's what he was trying to do there or if it was a snap over his head. Uh, uh, unless, unless they had the down marker wrong. Well, I think they're, uh, they, they, they lost the down. They should have lost the down on the uh, roughing of the penalty. Uh, the roughing of the, uh, excuse me, uh, by throwing the ball away. and uh, the, the intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. Thank you very much. You can see <laughs> uh, Coach Bonice is over there talking that over right now. Just couldn't yeah. get the words out. Yeah, and, and I think that's why he was, I don't think he was, he was actually dropping back the punt. They ended up getting an extra down out of it. Correct. So I think they'll all straighten all this out, and they should end up changing the, uh, the so down and distance. So you see Mark Bonese discussing that right now with the referee Frank Simmons. Now, because of the weather, we don't have the uh, referees mic up tonight. But we'll try to interpret, and you might be able to see their lips and, and be able to interpret it. <laughs> should have been fourth and 33. Well, you know, it, it, They'll, they'll, they'll figure that out. But I'm going to get back to one of the huge keys for Brother Martin tonight, Ken. And, and they just showed it to you on the, on the video there. 
Bonice said to me that one of the things they needed to do this week was make sure they got pass rush on this outstanding quarterback, Miles Brennan. And I tell you what, three out of the last four downs, they have flushed Brennan out of the uh, pocket and they have got pressure on him. And that's going to be one of their huge keys tonight. But you know what? When that happens, they can't leave receivers open down the field for the big play, the cheap touchdown. Well, whatever was decided, St. Stanislaus is getting fourth down and long. And Miles Brennan, the quarterback, gets a beauty of a punt. Wow, he will send this one back. Brother Martin wasn't expecting, or maybe wasn't expecting it. They had no one back to field the punt, which which uh, Mark Bonis told us they might do. Well, they might not have anybody back to field the punt, try to put pressure on them because uh, St. Stanislaus is so good at, at getting back and, and uh, making you believe they're going to punt and then faking it and having Brennan throw for the first down. Well, they're doing yard punt. They're doing it, Adam, an offensive formation. So the safe thing to do here is make sure that you're going to defend the formation. Must defend the formation first. Give up the punt and get your offense on the field. Any way you look at it, the ball will be down. You're going to get your offense back on the field, but you got to first make sure you defend the formation so that way there isn't any type of fake punt call. Well, onto the field comes uh, a three-year starter in Jake Brogy, almost 6'4", 201. He is a senior. It is his time. Last week in the win was 15 of 24 for 270 yards and three touchdowns. More importantly, no interceptions. He's a smart quarterback. He makes good throws, and he throws the first one a little bit behind Jeremy Singleton, who can't catch up to the ball. Players to watch for both teams here on the offense. Well, if you look at the offense, you're going to see the man Bruce Jordan Swilling, a junior, number nine, running back, who is going to be recruited by everybody around the country. Irv Smith, Jr., might recognize that name. Father played for the Saints. Tight end, uh, committed to Texas A&M. And another huge tight end, Peyton O'Quinn, number 88. Then over on defense, you'll see from St. Stanislaw, their sack leader, Tommy Tommy Reeder, and then you're going to see a couple of real good linebackers. Mitchell Walk, number 18, and Mason Favre, no relation, number nine, another linebacker for the Rocket Shaws. Overthrow of Jeremy Singleton on second down brings up third down and ten. He had Singleton open that time, by the way, on the name Favre. No relation to Brett, and as people will tell you here in Mississippi, the name Favre in Mississippi pronounced the same, even spelled differently, as much like Boudreaux in South Louisiana. And there's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> on third down, again to the air, again an open man, but Irv Smith in a little bit of a crowd, cannot reach a high ball, and one, two, three punt for the Crusaders on first down. Trying to get on Irv, their first possession, I'm sorry. Trying to get Irv Smith one-on-one -on -one with the safety right there. They kind of spreads Irv Smith out against the formation, which created a one-on-one -on -one situation with the safety, and Brogy just overthrew him. Could have been a real big play right there. You'll see it right here. Snap Brogy fakes the run and over right near over his fingers. Uh, you'll see Swill, um, you'll see um, Smith just missed the ball. Bailey Nuss is the punter. And if you're a football fan, the word Nuss, the name Nuss, is very important to you because Bobby Nuss was the coach at Chalmette for many, many years. No relation. No relation to Bailey Nuss, who gets a nice punt, which will be fielded at the 30-yard line and then returned by Pittman for or up to the 42. And with that, we will have a timeout. No score between Stanislaus and Brother Martin. back first down for the Rocket Jaws and they will run first time with Cahill Marlowe on a big gain on the right side and he will move the chains on the first the first run by the Rocket Jaws in this game. Cahill Marlowe you know outstanding running back only a sophomore last week uh, uh, he rushed uh, for 150 yards and one TD he's a 5'9 210 pound running back this is a no huddle team. They like to go very quick. Toss. Oh, and Betts has it and can't hold it. Incomplete. Well, they're a tempo offense. They're getting the play in. They're trying to run a play within every, you know, 30, 35 seconds. Very up tempo, what you see Oregon do, uh, what you see the Philadelphia Eagles do uh, uh, with Kelly. Those are some of the things that are filtering down to the high school game now. A handoff again to Marlowe. It worked the first time. Same running play. Doesn't work the second time. 
as the Crusaders are there to stop that one. Well, you, you saw inside zone run play right there. Uh, Brendan quick, Brown on the stop. Quickly lining back up, getting the play in, trying to run a play every 30 seconds or so. High up-tempo offense. Now we have a whistle. And I'm not sure if someone called timeout. A flag is down, far sideline, the linesman. Illegal procedure on the offense. Someone probably encroached from the offense into the neutral zone. Once again, when you do, stepping in the neutral zone from either side of the ball, they're going to kill the ball and either call it offsides or illegal procedure. This time a little shovel pass forward and Rogers, Chase Rogers has it. He's tackled short of the first down. Tell you what, nice little option play. You, that's the Utah shuffle pass that you saw uh, many years ago at Utah. Here it is right here. They're reading last man on the line of scrimmage. If the last man is up the field, they're going to shuffle the ball under. If the last man is down the line of scrimmage, he's going to option the ball to the back. It's a fourth down play. They need to move the chains. And there is Owen Betts with the catch, the first down, and a little bit more before finally being pulled down on the far side. That receiving core tonight from St. Stanislaus is out without one of their major receivers, a young man named Corman Blanchard, who uh, has been out with a bruised knee. But uh, stepping in to fill the big need for those guys tonight, Betts, Rogers, and then Peyton Pittman, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. It's time Brennan on the move and throws behind the intended receiver. That's again incomplete. And I thought that time Brennan might tuck it under and run. He'd rather throw. Last week, Brennan threw for 313 yards. He's top 300 yards passing in all three games, though St. Stanislaus is only one and two on the year. 18 to 36, 313 yards, three TDs. But he also gave up two interceptions. Brennan hands off to his running back, Marlowe, and Marlowe over the left side is stopped short. Sweep off the left-hand side to Marlowe, still running that up-tempo defense. Let me talk about number 10, Pittman, one of their big receivers right now. You're going to see him play both ways. He's not going to come off the field. He's going to play on defense in the secondary. He's going to be a receiver on offense. He's going to catch kickoffs. He's going to catch punts. This young man is a tremendous athlete, and uh, he's 6'3", 218 pounds. He's a junior. He's also being recruited by everyone around the country. As you can see right there, he's a fine-looking athlete. Nice shot of uh, Darius Pittman right there. Now, there was a flag on the play on the far side, and that penalty is being marked off, and it is a big one. Let's see if we can get our signal here. Holding. Again, a new oh, offensive wow. line. New offensive line, second holding penalty on the night for this rookie offensive line. These are the things that put you behind the sticks and it keeps you off time. When you're off time and behind the sticks, a type of offense that is tempo like this, it kind of puts a kink in the things that they want to do. Three receivers and the pass goes to the side with only one receiver, but Darius Pittman can't catch up to that one. And that time, Miles Brennan rushed his throw a little bit. Trying to get the ball out in space to their athlete. Uh, Darius Pittman, they're doing it off of the run zone game with the fake to the running back, getting out fast on the quick pass to Pittman. Look at this big, tall quarterback move with the football. He's being chased from behind, and he steps out of bounds on the far side. The thing I like right there, he kept his eyes downfield. Did you see that? Yes. He, he evades the rush. Good quarterback coaches teach good quarterbacks to keep their eyes down the field, and good quarterbacks are going to obviously learn that. Things are going to come open when you have to evade the rush. Always keep your eyes down the field. Nice job right there. But it's fourth down, and look how far behind the chains they are. Fourth and a long, long way to go, and he is tackled and dropped for a big loss. Back at about the 35-yard line, and Brother Martin will take over on downs. Great pressure right there by 99, John Burkert, 6'2", 230-pound sophomore, came off the edge, and that's one of the things that they have to do. Put pressure on this guy all night. That's one of their keys. Brother Martin and St. Stanislaus fans, Mellow Mushroom will donate 10% of your order to the school's athletics department through Saturday night. Stop by the Metairie or Covington locations. Tell your server and give back to your school with the best pizza in town. And don't forget to stay mellow. Mellow Mushroom. Brother Martin has their second possession with the football. 7-10 to play here in the first quarter. 
Martin, who passed on all three downs on their first possession, will hand it off and give it to Bruce Jordan, swilling and look at Bruce Jordan go, but a flag is down. This one might be coming back. We see Bruce Jordan bust one on the first down of their second possession with the football, but let's see if the call goes against the Crusaders. Holding. Well, that's going to negate big runs all the time. Let's take a look. You're going to see down block by the fullback, wrap around by the backside. Guard, it's all plugged up. Swilling bounces to the outside, and right off the edge, you saw a holding penalty. They caught it. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. What a great talent Bruce Jordan Swilling is. Last week, he had 24 attempts for 214 yards and four touchdowns. We talked about that in our pregame show. Everybody in the country is recruiting this young man. He is a fine athlete. Uh, he's been playing now for three years. And as a matter of fact, the LHSAA just granted him another year of eligibility yes. to a hardship. Exactly correct. So he, he's got a senior year to play. And already uh, LSU and many big schools have him targeted. They want him. They know what he can do. He's got the football again, looking for a little room on the inside. Well, one of, the of inside, outside, you know, this is the field, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but this is where Mr. Inside ran the football many years ago. We'll talk about that later, none other than Doc Blanchard. Right. Well, one of the keys tonight that Stanislaus said they had to do was be able to stop the run and force Brogy to have to throw the ball. And, uh, you know, that is one of their huge keys. So they're going to end up being an eight-man, nine-man fronts to do this. Second down and ten on the fingertips of Singleton, but just a little bit behind him, and he can't hold it again. Look at the highly recruited players who are in action tonight, and you see right off the bat for Brother Martin, look at the juniors, Bruce Jordan, Swilling, LSU, and a host of others, Trey Swilling. His brother, again, LSU and Moore. Jeremy Singleton, Tulane and Cincinnati. His little swing pass out of the backfield. This is where Swilling can really put on a show, and he does, breaking some tackles, and Moore staying on his feet. Look at him go before finally being wrestled to the ground on the far sideline and uh, picking up the lost yardage and a lot more to move the chains for a first down. Well, what you're going to see is you're going to see Stannis Loss packing the box here with eight and nine people in order to be able to stop the run. They're going to commit to stop the run. So, offensively, what do you got to do? You play the numbers. You're going to take the one-on-one -on -one routes. You're going to throw the swing routes out of the backfield. You're going to get the ball into your athlete's hands, which is what they did right there with Swilling. Great run. And the thing I like about it is he finishes runs north and south, low pad level, and then you get a little flag tacked on to the end. He must have been hit out of bounds, and he gives you a little land well, that, That's going to be, he had a 28-yard gain, and that's going to add, what, 10 more to it or 15 right here? What are they marking up? Another 15, another 15 to that. My goodness. So we are taking a hydration break, and that reminds us that WHNO thanks ABC Rental Centers for their support of today's game. ABC Rental has serviced the Mississippi Gulf Coast for more than 45 years. For your equipment, party, or wedding rental needs, contact one of their three locations or visit abcrental.com. Well, what we had right there, Ken, was he had a late hit out of bounds. Broke tackles, got hit late out of bounds, so they tack on the 15 from the spot where the penalty occurred, which gave them the huge... Uh, so a 28-yard gain just became a 45-yard gain with the help of the 15-yard penalty. Yeah, huge advance down the sideline. But let's get it back to what St. Stanislaus is trying to do here. They're going to commit to stop the run, and now we have seen Brother Martin looking at the numbers that are in the box, realize that they have the numbers on the outer edges, in the secondary, the one-on-one -on -one matchups. So what are they going to do? They're going to try to throw the ball and get the ball outside into their athletes' hands. And Wade, Brother Martin has had the little short guys open. Brokey has just not been sharp in the first quarter. He's been behind them just a little bit high. If he just starts finding the range, the Crusaders might move that football at will. Correct. It's just about timing, a little wet ball. A couple of things might be hindering that. First down for Brother Martin. And they will go with Brogy on the right-hand side run. That well, was a little broken play right there. I think it looked a little confused, but confusion there between Bruce Jordan Swillen and Brogy. Looked like it was supposed to be inside zone, and we just didn't get the handoff. Enough to handoff right there. 
Got some positive yards out of it, though. Five. It'll be second down and five for the Crusaders as they are on the edge of the red zone for St. Stanislaus at the 20-yard line. It'll be Bruce Jordan swelling again on the right side, and he just puts his head down and pushes a bunch of people past the first down marker inside the 10-yard line. Up front, dominating on that offensive line right there. You're going to see the handoff. It's outside zone. People might call it zone sweep, but every offensive lineman up front is taking nice big steps, trying to wall off everything they can and get up to the second level, which are the linebackers, and they get the ball swelling right off the edge on the zone, outside zone sweep. And just think again, as we just said, this young man, Bruce Jordan Swilling, only a junior now, and look at this, just a waltz right into the end zone for the touchdown for Bruce Jordan Swilling. Made that look real easy. Excellent blocking by Brother Martin, and we have the first touchdown of the evening by Bruce Jordan Swilling, a 20-yard run for the score. You can see the down block and the kick out. That is commonly known as power O. Kick out at the point of attack, double team at the point of attack. Backside guard wraps up in to pick up the scraping linebacker. No one there. Walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Crusaders. Blake Perilou, a senior, to attempt the point after. And he puts it through. No good. He missed it to the right. Goodness, it, from here, it, in our angle, it looked right. like it went through, but he just missed it over that right, that right upright. So it's 6 nothing, Brother Martin with the early lead. SportsNola.com has live prep football as Rummel and Covington face off at Joe Yenny Stadium. Watch it live on Sports Nola Saturday night at 7. And Brother Martin with a 6 to nothing lead sends one deep over the head of hey, Owen Betts. And the ball will come out as some of the players mix it up a little bit. Tempers flaring early. They come off of that and a 6 play 67 yard drive in which Bruce Jordan Swilling had 57. All but 10 of those yards belonged to him. Two minutes and eight seconds off the clock. And if that's a sign of things to come, Wade Kaiser, St. Stanislaus Rockachaws are going to have a battle stopping. But we said this might be more explosive. This is an offensive battle, or at least we're expecting one more so than a defensive battle tonight. Well, I mean... They controlled things up front on that drive. They took uh, control of the line of scrimmage, and that's what they like to do when they get their running game going. And uh, if they take control of that line of scrimmage this early, it could be a long night. Cahill Marlowe on a short gain on first down, and this is back to the air. Look out, there's Chase Rogers, and he'll move the chains. Good hands. Again, the favorite target of Miles Brennan, the quarterback. And that's one thing St. Stanislaus can do. Again, no huddle, fast pace. They can move this football down the field quickly. A 15-yard catch and run. But you also saw there was a missed tackle. But I'll tell you what, this uh, 
This Chase Rogers. Swing pass out to Brewer. Brewer coming around the right side. Has some positive yardage before being bumped out of bounds. This Chase Rogers, as I was saying, 20 receptions last year, 365 yards, four TDs on the year. He already holds an offer from the University of California. Ooh, California getting down into Mississippi, aren't they? Uh, down here recruiting a lot of players. But he's 6'3", 238 pounds. He's a nice looking athlete. Took, took a lot of big colleges of time to figure it out. Look at Marlowe. Look out. One man to beat. This is a foot race. Marlowe turns on the speed. He is gone into the end zone. And we have a tie ball game as St. Stanislaus scores when uh, K. Hill Marlowe runs 59 yards for the touchdown. Big play, inside zone, got everything blocked off and sealed off, and he hit the seam and outran the safety. He turned on the wheels with about 20 yards from the end zone, and he just ran away from everybody. Well, St. Stannis lost with an extra point here. Can take the lead in this one. Mason Barb. Wait a minute. Stop everything. We have a flag down. Mason Farb is your kicker, field goal kicker, extra point kicker. Also, look who the holder is right there. You got Miles Brennan as the holder on their uh, PAT field goal formation, so you can always expect some sort of fake, something to happen. Uh, Looking like there is a penalty on Brother Martin, and they're trying to figure out what the options are, whether they, they want to move it okay, half the distance the or take it a kickoff, one of the two. They can take it now, take it half the distance, or take it on the kickoff. It looks like they moved it half the distance. Coach, wh where did you like to take it, on the kickoff, if at all possible? I used to like to take it on the kickoff. I always yep. felt like uh, you know a half a, half a yard closer on a PAT kick didn't make much difference for a pretty good kicker. And I was you always blessed to have some pretty good kickers. You've always, you always had good kickers. Mason Favre converts the point after, and it is a 7-6 ball game. St. Stanislaus with the lead over Brother Morton. A four-play, 80-yard drive, 53 seconds is all it took for Marlowe to do this right here with the long run of 62 yards on the drive, 59 on the run. And Marlowe got the other three, so he had all 62 yards on that drive. Well, a lot of missed tackles right there, Ken. I saw missed tackled by number seven, Anderson. I saw uh, a missed tackle by the safety, Nuss, number 14. Got a tackle. Got to make sure that you first stop the run, even though they can throw the ball real well. What's getting to you now is the little up-tempo game. Yeah. You know, every 30 seconds they're popping off a play. Inside zone, outside zone, and then, of course, the throwing game. It kind of really kind of gasses your guys. You can't substitute. You can't get people in and off the field on defense, so you're going to have to stay on the field. It will have a tendency to get you gassed. You get blocked. You don't tackle. Results. Long yards plays, touchdowns. You know, these high tempo offenses only run three or four plays, Kent, as far as uh, running is concerned. They'll run an inside a play, they'll run an outside play, and then they'll run some sort of passing play. And now, uh, with it. Watch for both teams. Both of these teams onside kicked successfully last week. And. Uh, Showing it right there as St. Stanislaus and then stopping and backing off. And everybody hustled up for Brother Martin. So both of these teams have scouted the other. And uh, they know and expect the onside kick. That looked like one unintentional that was going to turn into onside kick. Jeremy Singleton picks it up and has nowhere to go. Is stuffed right at about the 26-yard line. Well, they're going to faint the onside kick. Run up, faint it, and then drop back and they'll try to get some movement and see what happens to be able to try to see if you're going to react to their fake or their faint okay so what we saw right there though they come back they go over the kickoff they didn't want to they want to keep it out of singleton's hands they wanted to keep out of swilling's hands back there so they sky kick it over to the edge and uh, nobody picks it up except for singleton and he picks the ball up and gets a few positive yards out brother martin of course plays in the highest division of high school football in louisiana 5a in mississippi they go as high as 6a and st stanislaus is a 4a team 
Brogy will hand off on first down. Here goes Bruce Jordan Swilling. They're going to run him until St. Stanislaus proves they can stop him, and he gets a first down on the first carry of this Martin drive. No, Martin's got three returning offensive linemen back from last year. Okay, the Quinez, Victor Quinez, uh, 6'1", 275 guard, their left guard, Patrick Lynch, their offensive center, 5'11", 245, and then here's a name you know, Jacob Clapp. Yes, he is. He's the little brother of the... Uh, Clap, young man that's playing and will probably be starting on the offensive line Saturday night up at uh, Starkville against Mississippi State. Yeah, he got a start last week, and he was all excited about it. And here comes Singleton. He finally pulls one down, and he is off to the races on the left side as on two plays, Brother Martin moves the chains both times with big gains all the way down to the 25-yard line of St. Stanislaus. What a talent a gain of 37 is. yards. Here we go. Run pass option for the quarterback. He gets it out there real quick on the wide receiver screen. Last week, Singleton, seven receptions for 68 yards and one TD. He's going to play both ways. You're going to see him in the secondary, and you're going to see him as a wide receiver. Outstanding athlete. Well, when you look at Bruce Jordan Swilling standing behind Jake Brogy, who's well-built, a cut athlete, and you just look at him, he just looks like all muscle. And here he goes with the carry on that right side. He's been having so much success there. Pushes through one tackle and is finally brought down at the 15-yard line. Out of the pistol offense, another way to attack the flank, the outside area with the zone stretch. You'll see the pistol offense, the handoff right there to Swilling, and he works downhill off the outside edge for a great gain, first down. I just love how he finishes off runs. First down, is on the 13-yard line. Now they move it inside to the 13-yard line now. First and 10, and Bruce Jordan Swilling is approaching 100 yards rushing, and we are still in the first quarter of this game. And here's a little delay. Give Bruce Jordan Swilling. Takes a bunch of rocket chaws with him into the end zone for the touchdown. That'll be a 13-yard touchdown play, but a flag is down, so let's see if it stands. Well, he took a lot of people with him there because there's not a whole heck of a lot of tackling going on out there. <laughs> let's just put it simple. You said before the game, face mask. They'll decline that, and they'll take it on the kickoff. Yeah, they'll take it on the kickoff, and they won't decline it. Obviously, they'll take it on the kickoff. But the thing about it is, is he's running hard north and south. Not a lot of people are getting his way. You know, I, I, I don't know if they want to turn this into a tennis match, you know, but they've got to still tackle this young man, or he's going to go off for over uh, 300 yards tonight. Yeah, he really will. Well, you said before, we, uh, we said we, they might light up the scoreboard, and you said we could approach anywhere between 70, 80, 90, maybe 100 points. And, look, we've got 19 on the board right now, and we still have some time to go in the first quarter. This time, the kick is good. It is 13 to 7. Brother Martin with the lead, 2.51 to play. And let's, uh, let's get back to talking about Brother Martin and their classification. St. Stanislaus and theirs and the difference between uh, another look at the touchdown first. And there you see Bruce Jordan Swilling. He'll just carry people with him, whether they've got him low, whether they have him high. He can spin out of them, make a good you can jive move out of them. Doesn't matter. This young man is so talented. Well, Ken, when you talk, you, you, you brought up the subject about the differences in Mississippi and Louisiana. First of all, all right, they, they, they go by the same federation football rules uh, in each national state. So there's, yeah, they're national rules. They're not, there's not much change there. But where you're going to see a change is, is in the classifications. They have six classifications in the state of Mississippi, whereas Louisiana has five. You know, St. Stanislaus is a foray. Uh, uh, classified football team and Brother Martin is a 5A classified football team but that means there's a huge difference still in the numbers of enrollment in their schools. Other couple of things are in the way they do their playoffs right now in Louisiana. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it the way I feel it. It's separate but equal. <laughs> I, I don't mean I like it, but uh, that's the way it is. That's the law of the land right now in Louisiana. We have to live by it. In Mississippi, they play by uh, where the old way you used to have it in regions and north versus south as far as your regions meet each other in the playoffs. So there are some slight differences from the way they do things as far as classifications. But when it gets right down to it, Ken, it's all football, and they're playing football here tonight. 
playing football. We've had three touchdowns in the last four minutes and 19 seconds of this first quarter once these teams loosened up a little bit and really started to find their range. So the Crusaders will kick it. The last one went deep over the head of Owen Betts and out of the end zone. Betts pulls this one down to the two. Has a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a seam, and now gets hit and buried as he crosses the 30-yard line up to about the 32-yard line, and he's gang-tackled there. That is a 30-yard return for Owen Betts. Tell you what, Betts is impressive. 6'2", 187 uh, pounds. He catches the ball on punts, catches it on kickoffs. He's an athlete. and um, Listen to this. You know, he he is a great kicker. He's right. a great long ball kicker, and he is a commitment. He has a commitment to Clemson to play soccer there. Well, he's so a he's multi-purpose a athlete. Commit. Yeah, multi-purpose athlete, and it's and, and that's what you like to see. Poor tackling right there by Brother Martin. Again, nice Cahill run. Marlo. Nice Cahill run Marlo. by Marlow. Nice run by Marlow. Poor tackling by the guys in white. I'm not seeing much tackling out there on either side of the ball. Let's take a look at the replay. Inside zone right there to Marlow. Miss tackle. Miss tackle. Arm tackle, miss tackle. No huddle. Brennan will scramble out of the pocket, directs a little traffic, and he will toss one. Owen Betts is wide open down the field and has it at the 10-yard line, falling inside the 10. My goodness, he got behind somebody for a 50-yard gain. On that one, he just beat Bailey Nuss. Well, we got a flag on the play. It's going to probably be nullified. But I tell you what, once again, key to the game. Here's our call right here by our official. Third hold and penalty of the night on a young offensive line from St. Stanislaus. But here, going back to the keys of the game, pressure for Brother Martin and not giving up the cheap play. Right there, that was the cheap play where they flush the quarterback. You can see Brennan gets flushed off the run fake. Great pressure, looks downfield, keeps his eyes downfield, and here is Betts behind somebody for the cheap play. Uh, if you're looking at it from Bailey, the defensive Bailey standpoint. needed some help on that one. And remember, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but if you missed it, St. Stanislaus had an offensive line that had five seniors on it that had played together since their sophomore year. Five sophomores, five juniors, five seniors. They all graduated off, and these guys got some experience, but not a whole lot. So there's five new people on that offensive line, and they're trying to make a go of it together. So... Well, and they will. And they, that's, they, the, that's the first uh, catch by Andrew Trapani in the game now, giving Cahill Marlow a little bit of a breather. And, and they will. They're, they're going to, as, as you were talking about their, their youth, they're, they're going to gain that experience, and they will put together that experience. And uh, it's going to happen. And each game, each rep they take, you've got to remember, this is game number four for them. Game number four as compared to Brother Martin's game number two, which is another difference in the state of Louisiana, Mississippi, on where they are in their game schedules. Brother Martin as week two on a 10-game schedule, and here is Stanislaus, who starts earlier on week four of yeah. a 11-game That was, game that was a catch by Chase Rogers, by the way. You're right. You're looking early August, very early August. Uh, Mississippi schools can start playing high school football. And uh, you know what? I like that. It's a little hot, but a little hotter in, in, in August to, be, to get that many games in, but not bad. Here comes Brennan. He's not afraid to scramble, look, and then throws it away. And I'll tell you what, there was a late hit that I, I don't, just don't think he caught enough of Brennan for anybody to see it, but that was a very, very dangerous hit by Jordan DeFaro. Well, two things I saw right there. Two things I saw right there. Uh, first, I saw a wide receiver uh, leave early, no flag. Second thing is a push down by a defensive lineman from Brother Martin that could have possibly been a foul. So things are getting a little heated out there. Uh, officials trying to get things straightened out. But they did call the illegal procedure. There we go. But the flag was not on the ground. That's, that's kind, of, uh, kind of odd. They come back and call the illegal procedure without putting the flag down. And the push down, by the way, on Brennan by DeFaro was not a real hard or a tough push down. But... It's one of those that in a very in a very close situation, you can get that called against you and give a team a first down. Well, 
little confusion. They're looking at what they're doing right now, and I'm also kind of confused on what's taking place right now. I don't know if they lost track of the downs, Ken, what actually took place. They called a penalty without a flag on the field. We saw the procedure. They're now giving the ball to Brother Martin. Bring it up over here. Without any explanation, we, have, we don't have a mic on our uh, head official tonight. So let's stay here and see what's going to go on. This is going to be interesting to see what oh, they, they did. You know what? They lost track of the downs. They didn't give them a down over on the holding penalty. On that holding penalty, they were supposed to get a down over, and they did not give them the down back. They didn't change the down marker on the other side. That could be it. So there's a possibility there's an issue with the downs. Uh, Coach Conadese wants to make sure he gets his say in with the officials, and I'm sure Coach Bonice is going to get his say in with the officials. Well, right now, Coach Bonice is pretty happy because his team <laughs> has got the football, What you're going to hear. Yeah, he wasn't earlier. When, when he thought it was <laughs> supposed to be fourth down, it wasn't. He wasn't too happy. Right now, Coach Conadese, Coach Bill Conadese of St. Stanislaus is saying, <laughs> hold it. Well, we need one more down. This, this reminds me of the old show, I Love Lucy. You have some <laughs> splaining to do, Lucy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there's there's some splaining going on right now. Let's try to figure this one out. I think we've got it figured out. I just don't yeah. – how are they going to decide? Coach Connedy – hey, Coach Connedy, as you can see him right there, he is uh, lobbying hard for his case. I can tell you that. Anyway, while it gets sorted out, the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase heads to the West Bank next week for a neighborhood rivalry between Archbishop Shaw and West Jefferson. You can watch it live Friday night on SportsNola.com and catch the tape-delayed broadcast next Saturday at noon on WHNO. That's Shaw and West Jeff next week on the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. Well, it looks like they got it figured out. Brother Martin's bringing the offense out, and whatever they decided, they stuck with their call. They lost track of their down, Ken. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's I think what that's happened. what we figured out. So it's first down. Brother Martin at the 36-yard line of St. Stanislaus. And guess what? Just give it to the horse, and he's going to just run it till somebody can stop him. Bruce Jordan Swilling. And... Uh, he is down to the 30-yard line, so that's a gain of about six yards there. Of course, we, if the name Swilling sounds familiar, he is the adopted son of Pat Swilling and uh, very proud of that. And he is living up to the Swilling name. Well, he's had an older brother also play football and basketball at Brother Martin. Now he's playing with his younger brother who also plays in the secondary. He was a fine athlete. Trey Swilling. And again, Bruce Jordan again. This one might be, I thought he might break it for six. He is inside the 15-yard line. Bruce Jordan swelling again, just showing what he can do with the football. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter when they start the clock. Another look at Bruce Jordan swelling as he just makes it happen inside, outside. And if they want to throw him the ball, he can do that too. We've got a good football offensive show here at St. Stanislaus. Brother Martin with the lead. Today's game is presented by First NBC Bank, providing real customer service and relationship banking now with 35 locations throughout Southeast Louisiana and the Florida Panhandle. First NBC Bank, member FDIC. Well, after one quarter, 20 points on the board, Brother Martin threatening one more time. And Bruce Jordan swilling unstoppable. Let's go, rock and, roll! and he is in there next to your three year Let's starter go, at quarterback, go, Jake Brogy. And Brogy taking his time will give to Bruce Jordan swilling again. And this time, the Rockachaws stack him up. 
Well, Stanislaus is stacking the line with nine people playing man on the perimeter of all receivers. If you saw the motion that time coming across, you saw the corner running with the number one receiver who was running across the formation. Signified that they're in man coverage. They run the inside zone. It gets stacked up. They just couldn't get to the linebackers. Too many people in the box to block. Lost the yard on that one. Second down, 11. Brogy a little trouble with the snap, but holds it enough to give it to Bruce Jordan Swilling, who takes it up the middle, and Bruce Jordan Swilling is very close, just misses the end zone. He is down at about the one-yard line. There was the power O again. This time they ran the power O to the right-hand side. Good kick out blocked by fullback, wrap around by the guard. Big hole for Swilling. Bruce Jordan Swilling, will he be allowed to finish it off and get this one into the end zone again? Oh, bad snap. Brogy picks it up. Brogy will scramble around. Can he get to the end zone? He's caught from behind and thrown for a loss. That will hurt a drive. Uh, yeah. Well snapped at the Joe quarterback's Reader. feet as far as, uh, as far as that is concerned. Great job by Joe Reeder right there getting in there and finally pulling Brogy down. But, I mean, that's going to stop your drive right there. You've got to have the snap when you're in gun. Got to have the snap when you're in gun. You, you know what's amazing to me? You don't see much of it anymore. You don't see quarterbacks taking snaps underneath the center. They go to college, and they're called to do that, and you don't see them where they can get under there and take a snap. Second down, goal. And you don't see it in the NFL either, for that matter of fact. I was watching a college Timeout game. Goal. I'm sorry, I was watching a college game the other day, and a uh, quarterback Timeout hasn't taken a snap underneath center uh, all night. He's got to go up and take a quarterback sneak out of the back of his, or out of his end zone and almost fumble the ball. That, that I've always believed, even if you are a gun team, a spread gun team, a pistol team, whatever you want to do, you got to learn still how to take a snap from underneath the center. Monday on WHNO Sports, it is Sports NOLA TV. Hall of Famer Ricky Jackson, Brian Ali Walsh, and host Ken Trahan break down the Saints season opener. They'll take a look at college. They'll take a look at prep action, too. That's Sports NOLA TV each Monday at 6 right here on WHNO TV 20. You know, I know you hear me harp a lot of times. I, I get on here and I harp about fundamentals, 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 fundamentals. But at this level, that's one of the most important things that you have to teach. And uh, that really kind of kind of gets in my crawl when you can't get the snap back in a gun and the quarterback doesn't get under and take a snap underneath center. It's just one of those things I think is just vitally important at this level of the game. Or any level of the game for that matter. Well, here it is. And again, they go to the big guy and they just give it to Bruce Jordan Swilling and he takes it all the way down to the two-yard line. Tell you what, this uh, offensive line of Brother Martin is just just tearing things up up front against the eight nine man front of uh, Stanislaus. Bruce Jordan's willing pushes through into the end zone touchdown. Brother Martin ran the same play back to back right there. Power O to their right hand side, running behind Runnels and Clap with a wrap around by the guard Quinez up into the hole and he walks into the end zone. Nineteen seven, Brother Martin with the lead. And we are only about uh, just a little under two minutes into the second quarter of play. Blake Perilou had to attempt the point after. Missed the first one off to the right just a little bit. That one just made it inside the right upright. Twenty to seven, and here is Bruce Jordan Swilling's second touchdown of the evening. Just power football right up the middle for the score.
All right, Brother Martin comfortably in front, 20 to 7, as Blake Perilou gets set to kick off for the Crusaders. And this one goes to Owen Betts on the far side. Betts with a little bit of running room, building up ahead of steam, spins off a tackler, and is finally brought down. Owen Betts on the return. 27 yard return by Owen Betts. WHNO thanks ABC Rental Centers for their support of today's game. ABC Rental has serviced the Mississippi Gulf Coast for more than 45 years. For your equipment, party, or wedding rental needs, contact one of their three locations or visit abcrental.com. Miles Brennan escaping the pressure that Brother Morton is trying to bring, has a man, and that's Chase Rogers shaking off one man, directing a little bit of traffic. Chase Rogers running down the sideline, escaping two more tacklers into the end zone for a touchdown, a 72-yard touchdown by Chase Rogers, and what a run. He broke about four tackles all the way down the field, and he looked a little bit like Doc Blanchard, who played on this field back a long time ago, who we're going to talk about later on in this broadcast. But my goodness, Chase Rogers did it all. What a ball. What a ball thrown by Miles Brennan. On point, great release while on the run, evading the rush, stepping up into the pocket, eyes down the field. Hits Rogers on the run for that particular touchdown. What I tell you what, great talent this guy, Miles Brennan is. He is something. Chase Rogers also only a junior, and guess what? Cal has also offered him. They're not just recruiting, they've offered him as juniors. He and quarterback Miles Brennan, they want them both. The extra point is up and good. We've got a 20 to 14 ball game. Look at this, Wade. Brennan steps up in the hole, evades the rush, looks downfield. Here comes the crossing route or the deep drag by Rogers, and he just outruns everybody. That's two. That's three. Next and he broke tackle. one earlier. So, wow, what a run by Chase, catch and run by Chase Rogers. Big plays. Brother Martin cannot give up the big play. That's one of the keys I talked about prior to the game. Thursday night on WHO Sports, it's the John Forcade Show presented by Veterans oh, Ford. Right, the Farmer Shaw, Ole Miss, and Saints quarterback is joined by Mike Detillier. They look ahead to the football weekend each Thursday night at 6 right here on WHO TV 20. Ken, I'm going to tell you who's tired. All right, I'm going to tell you who's tired. The defense for the Rocket Shaws. They just got off the field, Let's one play touchdown, up. and they're right get back, back up, on. Yeah. And they got to stop swelling. And they got to stop swelling. That's the key sentence in that statement. They've got to stop swelling. Singleton on the far side has a little room to build up ahead of steam, and uh, Seam he hits it and is finally pulled That's down as he crosses the 30 and gets up to about the 32-yard okay. line. Well, you got to remember, the Rocket Shaws are an up-tempo offense, so they're getting to play in, running in about every 30 to 35 seconds, so boom, they score on the first one. Just about to drink a cup of Gatorade was the defense. Guess what? They didn't get any. They're right back on now. Didn't even get to sit on the bench for a didn't few get minutes to catch the their breath. And no I Gatorade, no time to catch a little oxygen. And look, they're tired. We've got 34 points on the board and nine and a half minutes to play in the first half. You know more points are coming. Well, uh, our neck tomorrow is going to feel like we were at the U.S. Open. <laughs> Put a camera on us and we'll look like we're watching a tennis volley going defense! left, right, left, right. Defense! 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 Well, you know, th that's one of the plus. The, the, you know, the plus of the hurry up. High tempo offense is you're getting a lot of more reps in as far as your plays are concerned. Negative is your defense does not get to rest if you're a three and out or if you score real quickly. This time faking to Bruce Jordan, swilling, going long. It's a fingertip grab and catch by Singleton. What a big time catch and super coverage by Brendan Logan. And still Singleton was able to make the catch. Here it is, fade route. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage out there on the edge. They fake the run, throw the fade route right there to Singleton. Great catch, great placement of the ball. And I tell you what, good coverage right there by Brendan Logan. Brendan Logan was all over that. Couldn't ask for any more. 27-yard gain, first down, Brother Martin. And this time against a little bit of a blitz. 
Bruce Jordan Swilling's got a wide open hole and the blitz was coming. Nobody was back there to stop him and he goes all the way for the touchdown. Caught Bruce him in a blitz. Jordan Swilling again. Caught him in a blitz, but the second thing they caught him again in was man coverage. Yep. Once you pop that thing in a secondary, there's no free safety right there in the center of the field to be able to run anything down. So he pops it in the secondary and there was nobody catching him. That's Bruce Jordan Swilling, my goodness, another score on the board. This time, Brother Martin had everybody split. They'll swing the gate back to the center of the field now as everybody was well covered by St. Stanislaus on the old gate. That was a two-play, 67-yard drive, 32 seconds. They're scoring faster than... We can keep up with it here. It just gets over the crossbar, but it does, and it's 27 to 14. That's our defense. Well, a new segment for you this season is Traditions, presented by Joseph A. Bank, the new tradition since 1905 with locations downtown in Metairie and in Mandeville. Today we look at perhaps the greatest football player in St. Stanislaus history, Doc Blanchard. 70 years ago this fall, Doc Blanchard won the Heisman Trophy at Army. Blanchard and Glenn Davis combined to form one of college football's legendary backfields, Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside. And before he went to West Point, Blanchard starred right here at St. Stanislaus on this field. He donated his Heisman, Maxwell, and Sullivan Awards to his prep album St. Stanislaus in 1989, and they remain here on display today. The only player ever to win all three of those awards in the same year. He won back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships at Army. Right now, we've got Stephanie Altman on the field with a guest. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie. Thank you, Ken. I'm here with Brother Francis Fleming, the groundskeeper for St. Stanislaus. Brother Francis, I know this field is special to you for many different reasons. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, Doc Blanchard played on this field, and also after the storm, I rebuilt it again so we have a good place to play. You rebuilt it after Katrina so that it would actually drain off the side of the field, correct? Yes, it used to, and then after the storm, the drains along the fields got filled in, so I had to do a, a new underground uh, drainage system for it. So I know today we got at least two inches of rain. How does the field look tonight? It drained very well. We had no water standing on the field for the game tonight. I'm very happy. I bet Doc wished you had a drainage system like that back then, huh? No, they didn't. And uh, But we do have a good sandy surface uh, soil, so that helps a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Brother Francis. Ken and Wade, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Brother Francis Fleming. And, boy, I tell you what, he did a great job with this field because they had almost two inches of rain today, and it is just a little bit soft. There is no standing water. You almost don't even know that it was rain and not sprinklers that were on Chase Rogers with the catch. And i got to tell you, Doc Blanchard, on this very field, they didn't move it, they didn't rebuild it. This is the field Doc Blanchard ran on. He was such a great player at Army. He was the Mr. Inside. Glenn Davis was the Mr. Outside. But after they routed Notre Dame 59 to nothing one year, and I'll tell you right after Marlowe makes this run, he is brought down for a short gain. Notre Dame coach Ed McGeever went into the press room and told the, the writers, he said, gentlemen, I've just seen Superman play football, and he's wearing number 35 for Army. His name is not Clark Kent. It's Doc Blanchard. I'll tell you what, what is impressive is being able to see that Heisman Trophy live right here in the school at St. Stanislaus. And what an honor it is for the young men to every day to be able to walk past that and take a look at that great trophy. The only prep school in Mississippi to produce a Heisman winner, St. Stanislaus. Well, a lot of tradition right here on the bay. You know, it's been wiped out a couple times with a couple of hurricanes, rebuilt. The Brothers of the Sacred Heart do a great job, as I said, educating young man. This is a fourth down play. Education. Fourth down play, Miles Brennan. Miles Brennan caught, set, and Brother Martin will take over on down. Now that sack, I believe, coming from Cameron Duplanter. Well, you can see it right here. It's fourth down. Instead of quick, uh, quick punting it out of an offensive formation, you can see the great pressure off the edge right there by Duplanter. No, I think that came from Jordan Tafaro with help uh, from Duplanter. Right. Really nice by Tafaro. Tafaro, Duplanter right there closing in and shutting down the uh, running hole so Brennan couldn't see down the field, bringing him down for the sack. 
And Brother Martin takes over on down. Still 7.44 to play in the first half. 27 to 14. Brother Martin has the lead. And if you like offensive football, as we told you in the open, Wade said, get set because this is going to be an offensive fireworks display. And we have not been disappointed by that. So Brogy ready to go on first down for Brother Martin, who takes over on downs. As the defense holds, Bruce Jordan swilling. They'll run him until somebody can stop him. He'll try the left side. They can't. He lost the football out of bounds. Fumbled it out of bounds. They motion the corner away, leave the corner short, the edge of the field short with one player less, and they run zone sweep to that side of the field. You saw the motion come across. They were removing a defensive back because they're in man coverage, and they run the zone stretch back against the motion. Fumbles the ball out of bounds. Bruce Jordan swelling again, just cutting back inside. Upended with a nice tackle. My goodness. Saving tackle right there by 95. That was Austin Gardner on a saving tackle, or Swilling would have been sitting in the end zone again. Right here, bang. Trips him up, takes him down. Good tackle. In 17 minutes of football for Bruce Jordan Swilling, 16 rushes, 172 yards, three touchdowns. And he's got a 28-yard reception. Make it four touchdowns. There's Bruce Jordan swilling into the end zone again. Unstoppable tonight. Ken, St. Stanislaus has committed to playing man football all over the field and putting as many people in the box as they can. So that time, Brother Martin just moves the secondary out of the way by putting three wide receivers out in a wide trips formation, takes three completely out of the box, leaves the rest of the defense in there. They get one-on-one -on -one blocks, nobody in the secondary to stop him, and he walks into the end zone. Parallel again. And this one's blocked, picked up. And you cannot return it in high school football, correct? That is correct, not in high school football. Great block right there by Taylor Trapani. Comes off the edge, you'll see it right here. Oh, no, you got the touchdown here. Here's the touchdown. I think that's the fourth of the night for Mr. Swilling. Walks in untouched. The difference is in college football, you could have returned that correct. for a two-point play. Correct. That is the difference. In federation rules in high school, once the ball is kicked on a point after touchdown, it is a dead ball if it is blocked. Great block right there by Tyler Trapani coming off of the Brother Martin left edge and making the block. If you're interested in purchasing a DVD copy of today's game, send an email to prep at sportsnola.com or call our offices at 504-681-0120 during normal business hours. You will receive a reply with more information on purchasing the DVDs. If you like offensive football, you're going to want to purchase a DVD of this football game. 33-14, to 14, my goodness. I just saw them roll the oxygen down to the uh, bench for the uh, St. Stanislaus defense there. Those guys are, I'm sure, are gassed. Yeah, they're bringing some up here for the scoreboard operator, too. He's gassed <laughs> just changing the score and moving the clock. A three-play, 34-yard drive took 56 seconds, swilling on the drive, three rushes, 34 yards, and the touchdown. So Perilou will send it on its way with six minutes and 48 seconds still to play before halftime. Look for more points to go on the board. This time Darius Pittman on the return. Breaks one tackle, two, and is looking for more room but can't find it. Darius Pittman, a 6'3 junior. And again, one thing that makes Miles Brennan so effective, he's got a big receiving core. Betts is 6'2, Pittman's 6'3. You're not hearing Carbon Blanchard's name. He's 6'3. He's a junior. He's got a strained knee. The good news for St. Stanislaus is they expect him back, if not next week, the week after. He'll be ready for their district play, which is very, very important. Here goes Marlowe on an outside run. Cutting it back to the inside, Brother Martin stuffs it. Great pursuit right there. Number 97, Matthew Clapp. 
Yes, another clap. This one's on defense. Got help from Blair Joseph. And there's Blair Joseph coming over there to clean him up also. Great inside-out pursuit. You're seeing Brother Martin play in their three-man defensive front where they're playing a lot of zone coverage. And they're playing a lot of thirds across the top. What's open are the underneath zones, and that is where Stanislaus has been having success on the night, and that's where uh, Chase Rogers has been getting himself open in those underneath zones, catching the ball and getting great running room. Cahill Marlowe again on second down, doesn't pick up the first, and it's a third down and five, and we are at a hydration break, a water break for both of these teams, and gives us a chance just to kind of catch up with everything here. We will take a break. We'll take a break with them because we need some water. And we'll take that break in an offensive thriller with Brother Martin in the lead comfortable. Well, you're taking a good look right here at uh, Brennan, and on a big third down play, a big rush forces him to throw and release early, and now St. Stanislaus is facing fourth down. Try to set up a screen right there. He just overthrew him a little bit. I think he saw the coverage was out there, and he actually threw that away to set up the fourth down. And your quarterback, Miles Brennan, is also your punter. Big rush! because he punts very close to the line of scrimmage, but he's got a great leg, and look at that. Gets a great St. Stanislaus roll, hit at the 30, and roll down to the 20-yard line of Brother Martin, and that's where the Crusaders will take it over first down and 10, leading 33-14 to 14 with 5.41 to play in the first half. Well, if you look at that punt formation, it isn't a punt formation. It's an offensive formation Just punt for a 52-yard like punt right ah. there. And what ends up taking place is you've got to defend the offensive formation. So Brother Martin has taken the attitude, well, we're just going to defend the formation, make sure we don't give up some sort of uh, cheap first down, just let them punt the ball, let the ball roll. And it's very effective, extremely effective tactic for the Rocket Shaws. And it's uh, you know 52-yard punt. He's got a nice leg. Ball rolls a little bit extra. You know, and I tell you what, it, uh, it, it it switches the field real quick. He's punted twice, and when you've got a quarterback like Miles Brennan who can also give you 50-plus yards in high school on a punt, you can let him punt out of that formation because he can throw it any time, but you turn around, you give it to Bruce Jordan Swilling, and look out. Here he goes. This is going to be an 80-yard touchdown run by Bruce Jordan Swilling, who's piling up unbelievable numbers tonight. Bruce Jordan Swilling on a one play, his fifth touchdown of the night. Unbelievable to watch this young man do what he can do on the field of play. Well, counter Trey, Ken. Pull the guard, kick out the force, take the backside tackle, wrap him up in the hole, and seal any linebacker that's there. And he goes 80 yards untouched. 39 to 14. They're now rolling the oxygen over to Brother Martin's side, and I think they're going to let Bruce George Swilly suck down some oxygen because I think he's gassed. <laughs> he, he reached the 100-yard mark so early in this game, and I, I believe he's over 200 now. So i going to look down and see what Tommy Cooper, our statistician, says. This extra point just makes it through again on that right upright. I want you to see the counter trade out right there. You see the down blocks by the offensive lineman. You saw the kick out by the backside guard, which was Quinez. The backside wrap by Clem, 74, the offensive tackle. And then the footwork of Swilling in the hole, getting north and south. And bye-bye, he's gone. 80 yards for the score, a one-play drive, and he's just unstoppable. Tell you what, I love, I love talking about those offensive linemen. You know, I mean, those are, those are the guys that have, and, and, and I would think any 
outstanding running back or any quarterback like Miles Brennan will talk about how their offensive line protects for them or their offensive line gets the down block on the counter tray with the kick out block by the guard, the wrap by the tackle. He's going back to that sideline right now and saying, hey, guys, great block. Now, Brother Martin comfortably in control. Can Stanislaus, with that high-powered offense they have, can they put some points on the board and just continue to light up the scoreboard as we were expecting them to do? Well, I mean, the thing is here, I mean, they can't get away from their game plan. They can score fast and they can score often. I mean, uh, you know, they've done it on one play. You've got great receivers. You've got a great quarterback. They can score in, in a... In a in a flash so they need to stay with their game plan and just keep pressing and doing what they need to do this will be Owen Betts Betts builds up a good head of steam when he runs he's got great moves very strong legs again a soccer good soccer player and to commit to Clemson to play soccer there he is their long long field goal kicker when needed well, he's got nice speed too I mean he really has a nice burst of speed he could show it. He shows it right there on the kickoffs, and uh, uh, I'm telling you, he's a, he's a fine athlete. Took it at about the one yard line, a 33 yard return, first down. Miles Brennan, he'll scramble around and just throw this one away over to the sideline. They did have a receiver in the area, and Brennan's making sure that the referee sees that there was that receiver there, saying had a guy out there, and he did. Had two people in the vicinity. Well, you had pressure off the edge by Brother Martin and uh, flushed him from the pocket, and he just had to get rid of the ball. But I tell you what, his, his foot mobility and his presence of evading the rush is really impressive. Now, if you've been watching this broadcast and you hear Miles Brennan, Miles Brennan, and you're wondering, is he related to any of the Brennan's restaurants in New Orleans? The answer is yes. He is the great-grandson of Owen Brennan. Brennan's Mr. B's, Commander's Palace, and the like. And he loves to throw to Chase Rogers. And Rogers pulls that one in to move the chains for a first down, but he's slow to get up. He may have turned an ankle or something. Or was that Chase? I think that was up. Uh, no, that, 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 that was coming in Darius Pittman on that one. And that's a 27-yard gain in Pittman. A little slow to get up. He might have cramped. Got him on the bench, and they're working on the leg. And a run this time won't go anywhere by Marlowe. Tries to run the inside zone right up the middle. He runs into a wall of defenders. Uh, Somon Anderson, Brennan Brown, Will Fulham, all right there to make the hit. Uh, linebacking court, Brother Martin. Brennan with play action this time, looking long, throwing long, throwing against man coverage. That one jumped up, and is it picked off down below? Incomplete. Almost picked off by Blair Joseph. Tell you what, one-on-one -on -one coverage right out there. It, yeah, or was that a, Trace Willing? I, I think that Trace was Trace Willing. Willing. Trace at, a, Willing. At, a, at a point in time, zone coverage becomes man coverage, Ken. When you have to turn and defend the man that's in your zone. Well, Trace on Willing the go, did it well. On the go route right there, Trace Swilling stays on top of the receiver and makes a nice play. Toss to Marlowe out of the backfield this time. They'll throw to the running back, got hit hard, stood up, and then banged in two from behind and brought down short of the first down at the 35-yard line. They set up the screen to Marlowe, dumps it right off, gets north hit. and south. Very nice Boom. physical right hit the right there. The he evades the first hit, and he gets brought down by a host of Brother Martin tacklers after that. Quick toss, and that's to Chase Rogers. Rogers has it in traffic, went up high and pulled it down. Big time catch by Chase Rogers. A little penalty on the field, and it looks like we have a roughing the quarterback, a roughing the passer penalty against Brother Martin. Hit him a tad late. That's going to be a 15-yard personal foul. Well, we're getting back to what I said way back in the first quarter. That they had just some real easy pushing, but sometimes, and I didn't see how far that went or how hard that was, but, boy, that was a big-time catch by Chase Rogers. So what they do is they tack the personal foul on to the end of the play. It's uh, 
on the seceding spot, and they'll have first down now inside the 10-yard line. Running big rush. They let him come in, and he'll throw left side incomplete. Trying to throw screen to the left side again into a bunch of traffic. He's lucky that wasn't picked off and taken the other way. Trying that, to throw to Will Greer, and that would have been his first catch of this ball game. That one he needed to when he looked for the screen to the left, saw that it was defended real well by a lot of white jerseys, just needed to throw that one out of the back of the end zone to get rid of it. Miles Brennan is almost to 200 yards. He's thrown for 300 in every game this year. They'll try the little inside shuttle and the little shuffle pass we saw earlier in the game. It's a little option shuffle pass right there to Rodgers coming around. I'm impressed with Rodgers. What an athlete Me this too. young man is. Me too. I'll tell you what, he catches the ball. He'll catch the ball on the shuffle inside. He'll run hard up and inside. They'll play him at his, what we call a Y receiver off the hip, as you can see right there now. He's a physical young man. And they're going to Rodgers again. Rodgers is in there. Is he, did he make it? No, very close. Just missed. Flag is down. I think he's got the score, but the flag is down. We'll have to wait and see what the flag's all about. They brought him underneath on a bootleg. We got an illegal procedure by our official right there against the Rocket Charge. So they're going to negate the game. They're going to back it up, I'm sure. But I tell you what you saw right there is you saw Rodgers, who we were just talking about, come from the other side of the formation, slip behind the offensive line off of the bootleg action. The ball dumped right out to him. He catches the ball and runs hard, takes the lick. I'm impressed with this young man. Whistles. Brother Martin pointing towards St. Stanislaus. Sorry, folks, I must have missed the signal. Uh, ball was finally spotted on the... Uh, you know, I think they get going so fast, they don't get their offensive line set. Uh, they want to try to hurry up and press press the tempo. you got to make sure everybody is set, and I think that's a case right there. They tack off five more yards for illegal procedure because somebody isn't set. They're trying to go so fast. They need to make sure everybody is set. This isn't Canada. <laughs> Brennan in trouble, and they drop him for a loss. That was number 97, Matthew Clapp, Matthew a returning Clapp. starter, part of that Clapp family, 6'2", 262-pound junior, closing off the running lane right there for Brennan as he was stepping up into the pocket. Well, I'm talking to Tommy Clapp before the game, he said he's just so proud of Matthew. He's, he's just put on some weight, and he's working so hard at it and just really proud of what he's been able to accomplish in just one game, and you know he's having a good game here. A lot of real estate. Brennan will throw. Almost caught, but a hard hit on Harrison Brewer. Knocks that ball loose, and a flag is down way back uh, where Brennan threw the football. Christopher Webb does a nice job breaking up the pass right there, coming in at the last second, getting a hand inside the hands of the receivers and knocking the ball away. Well, that was fourth down, so... You can see Brennan stepping up, throwing a pass to the corner, and here he Boy, comes. Nice stick. Hit. Nice breakup right there by Christopher Webb. So Brother Martin is able to hold St. Stanislaus out of the end zone from scoring. Already 54 points on the board, and we still have 217 to play in the first half. Brother Martin has 40 of them. And St. Stanislaus could have two more. They drove down deep in Brother Martin territory twice, but couldn't turn those into points. Now the Crusaders have it. Weber! Deep in their own territory, they're at about their Weber! own 17 yard line. Weber! Give to Bruce Jordan Swilling. He may go again down the left side. This may be a foot race. Look out. Here we go. One man to beat. And Bruce Jordan Swilling scores again his sixth touchdown of the night. He is just unstoppable and just yeah. pouring it on. And with long runs like that, we've got to take a look. I'm not even sure if we can keep up with the yardage. He's racking up right now. Well, we've seen that before. They run motion, move the corner out of the way because they're in man coverage. They leave themselves the numbers short into the boundary, and they run the outside zone sweep rushes. stretch to Bruce Jordan Swilly, and he's up to 343 yards right now as we stand. Uh, with 2:04 left in the yeah, uh, first almost half, tw in 22 minutes, he scored. He, he's racked up 343 yards. My goodness! Perilou for the point after 47 to 14. Brother Martin 
with the lead and a good crowd here at St. Stanislaus. Have well, you ever seen a performance like this weighed by a young by a young man on your, either your team or against one of your teams? Well, I, I, I've seen him out of uh, a guy that plays right now up at LSU with the number five. <laughs> it was a pretty good <laughs> running back for St. Aug. Yeah, Leonard I've, Fournette. I've, you know, come to think of it, I've you're right. Seen we that. have seen that with Leonard Fournette. I, I have Absolutely. seen that. I've witnessed it against myself, and uh, I've seen it against other teams. But I tell you what, though, this is really impressive. But, but, but let me say this. Let me say this. St. Stanislaus has committed to playing man defense. So by motioning, by lining up in particular formations, they are moving their secondary completely out of the way. So... If Jordan Swilling breaks the line of scrimmage, he's running into a secondary where there's no secondary. Yeah. They're gone. They're moved. They're out of the way by formation or by motion. And look, when you're outmanned and you're outnumbered, you're a 4A school when the highest division is 6A, and you're playing a 5A school, which is the highest division in Louisiana high school football, then you're going to be outmanned, outnumbered. You've got to try to find a way to neutralize and, and – it's just hard to neutralize a guy that's got the hot hand that can do what Brother Martin and uh, uh, Jordan Swilling is doing on the field. Well, you know, I tell you what you could see, Ken, if this, uh, they don't put a stop to him, this could be some sort of record. Well, without question. Betts, Owen Betts, on the return, he won't get much. And let's go downstairs to Stephanie Altman. You've been hearing us say... Rocket Chaws. Stephanie? Now, if you're wondering what this weird little thing is, it's the it's the St. Stanislaus mascot, a Rocket Shaw. Now, its meaning it kind of refers to devil grass, and it's a pesky little sandburst students used to have to pull out of their feet when they walked across the field. It sprung up naturally in the sandy soil, and the mascot goes, the credit goes the, all the way back to the principal from 1916. Yeah, the Rocket Chaw uh, mascot was supposed to be out here, but uh, I think his uh, suit, his suit got wet <laughs> in the rain earlier, and uh, he's trying to blow dry it. So uh, the Rocket Chaw couldn't make it. Marlowe got hit hard, fumble, and it's a big scramble for the football. Who comes up with it? Marlowe slow to get up after that jarring hit, and uh, Brother Martin, who says they've got the football, they're holding it. Well, they've got the ball in their hands. We haven't gotten a signal yet. That was Aubrey, Aubrey. Mogurn, Mogurn <laughs> coming up with the ball. But look at that hit. Look at that form tackle right there. Oh, I like that. Man, was that a shot? That was a great stick. And, boy, is that young man excited. That looked like number 94, Zach Schultz, that made that pop. Boy, I tell you what, I really like that. He Wraps up, good form tackle, good safe hit, but it looks like they didn't give the uh, fumble to Brother Martin. Well, we have less than one minute to play in the first half. 61 points on the board, 47 of them belonging to Brother Martin. The offensive show we expected, just expected Miles Brennan to maybe have another touchdown or two on the board, and I think they could have had two more. Just had some unlucky breaks. Good shot right there of Miles Brennan. Heavily recruited. Again, player of the year in 4A football last year in the state of Mississippi. Brother Martin and St. Stanislaus fans, Mellow Mushroom will donate 10% of your order to your high school's athletics department through Saturday night. So stop by the Metairie or Covington locations, tell your server, and give back to your school with the best pizza in town. And don't forget, stay mellow and stay mellow at the Mellow Mushroom. You know, looking at Miles Brennan, the numbers he's put up, the way he's played, even though he's driven him down a few times and couldn't get the ball into the end zone, I'm still impressed with what this young man is doing against a much bigger program, a much bigger school, a 5A school. They're 4A 
here in Mississippi in a, uh, a state where 6A is the highest classification, and Brennan that time wrestled to the ground. Well, uh, he's a competitor, and uh, that's what he does. He competes. He lines up every day uh, at practice and competes, and he comes out in a uh, game every Friday night and competes, and uh, he's going to compete every day on here tonight. And, After you uh, clap. He can score real quick. He can get this offense score real quick. They'll be right back in it. Matthew Clapp with that last tackle. And there you see a good, uh, and he's a little upset as Brennan didn't want to go down there, but did. He was trying to make something happen as the clock is running down. Under 10 seconds to play in the first half, and the clock will just run out. Down to two seconds, one second, and that's the end of the first half of play with 61 points on the board, 47 to 14. Brother Martin with a comfortable lead over St. Stanislaus. We expected a fireworks show on the scoreboard, and we've seen one from both schools. Halftime, back with the halftime show after this.
It's halftime. Welcome back to St. Stanislaus, Ken Berthelot, along with Wade Kaiser. And we have seen the Bruce Jordan Swilling Show in the first half. You know, Brother Martin started off just a little bit slow. We saw a lot from Miles Brennan and St. Stanislaus. Then all of a sudden they said, why try to pass it? Let's just give the ball to Bruce Jordan Swilling. He scored six touchdowns. He's put on a show. Wait, have you seen anything like that? We talked about it one or two times, maybe from Leonard Fournette, but wow. 343 yards, Ken. Think about this. Their last four possessions, they scored touchdowns. 13 seconds, 15 seconds, 56 seconds, 32 seconds, all resulted in touchdowns by Swilling. It's the Swilling show, as you said. But let me say this, all right? St. Santa's loss can get right back in this real quick. Why? Miles Brennan. Absolutely. This young man has a great arm, great quarterback presence, and he has a trio of receivers that are big-time players. He gets the ball into their hands. They can go, and they did that tonight. They have scored on one play. They get back in this. I'll tell you what, my neck's hurting tomorrow because it's a tennis match. <laughs> going right and going left. He'll find Chase Rogers. Miles Brennan will get St. Stanislaus back on the board in the second half. What does both coaches talk about right now? At halftime, coming out to the second half, and I'm guessing I'm going to ask you from the Brother Martin side, does Mark Bonis rest, uh, swelling the rest of the way? This is week number three. This is also a part of the, uh, excuse me, the week number two for Brother Martin. This is a part of the plan of getting them ready for going in a district. So he's going to need some more playing time. Yeah. It's not to the point where they're going to try to put more scores on the board, where they sure they want to score, but they're not trying to rub anything in. But they need to make sure Jordan Swilling gets his reps, his offensive line gets his reps, as well as Brogy gets his reps now. Okay? So you're going to see, I would think, Swilling again. How long? Don't know. That's what they're going to talk about right now. But what Brother Martin's talking about right now in their locker room is, number one, continue keeping getting pressure on Miles Brennan. That was one of the, my keys of the game. Pressure on Brennan, but do not give up the cheap touchdown where Brennan scrambles and dumps the ball to a wide-open receiver who has gotten behind DBs or DBs have come up to stop the run and they've got a wide-open receiver. Okay, so he's talking about that right now to his defense. Now, in the Rocketshaw locker room, okay, Coach Connitz is saying this. Whatever you got to do, let's tackle. All right, let's tackle. Let's do something and tackle this guy because we can score. Let's slow him down. Let's get ourselves back into this thing. Don't panic. We can do this. But you got to tackle. And your, your prediction, we might see 100 points. We might see 100 points if uh, both teams come out scoring again. Hey, with that... We will take a break and be back with the second half kickoff. This is the fifth of uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling's six first half touchdowns. Look at him go.
Back at St. Stanislaus at halftime, 47 to 14. Brother Martin leading St. Stanislaus. Let us make one correction. Bruce Jordan Swilling had seven touchdowns, all seven of Brother Martin touchdowns. And we want to make that correction. Let's go downstairs to field reporter Stephanie Altman. Stephanie. Thank you, Ken. You know, I talked to Coach Bonice at halftime. He says he just wants them to keep scoring and finish strong. Coach Gonnady says defensively he wants them to make more tackles, but other than that, he just wants them to continue to play football. Back to you, Ken and Wade. Wow, thank you, Stephanie. Keep scoring. Uh, well, we are going to get to 100 points tonight. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, knowing uh, Coach Bonice, the winner, he's still yeah. intense. He's an intense <laughs> intense guy, and he's, he's always very prepared. And, and then I, I think what he wants to be able to do is he wants to make sure he completely has a good showing here tonight is what he wants to say. And, and then, uh, you know, Coach Conadis wants his kids to tackle. They've got to tackle better on defense. Well, as St. Stanislaus kicks this one deep and it'll go out of bounds, and while they decide whether they're going to take it or kick it again, um, the 19 rushes for 343 yards and seven touchdowns was a record for Bruce Jordan Swilling. Now, not a record for a half, a record for an entire game. The old record holder held by assistant coach Dante Butler, who was at Brother Martin and Tulane, 305 yards and five touchdowns in a game. And in the first half, uh, Jordan Swilling has already surpassed that with 19 rushes, 343 yards, seven touchdowns. And you see some pretty good numbers. Well, numbers on Brogy, three for seven, 92 yards. He hadn't had to throw the football. Right, right. And I think we have a new running back in there for Brother Martin. Yeah, I think we do. It's going to be Eric Lassar. And uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling is going to get a rest. A record in the first half is enough. No use taking a chance and getting him hurt. So Eric Lassar, who carried three times for 33 yards without a touchdown in the first game last week, is going to see a little bit of action to start this game in the second half. Lassare looking for some room, bottled up, nowhere to go. Gives us also a little chance to talk about Jake Brogy because, again, listen to these scoring runs, and you'll see why Brogy didn't have a chance to throw it very much because on first down, He'd hand off to Bruce Jordan Swilling, and Jordan Swilling would take it for a score. Well, Wade, Wade went over this, 13 seconds, 15 seconds, 56 seconds, and 32 seconds. That was the time on the last four scoring drives for Brother Martin. Well, once again, I, St. Stanislaus was going to commit to stop the run. So in order to do that, they were going to try to put uh, flag down eight and nine guys in the box. So what that was going to result in is they were going to have to play man coverage on the perimeter. Okay, right. so once you play man coverage on the perimeter, you commit to doing that. Once you break the line of scrimmage, you're running around a secondary. There is no one there to pull you down. Hence, you break the line of scrimmage. Jordan does. Long runs. And that's what happened. And uh, here goes a run right here up the middle. Eric Lasserre. Well, counter Trey right there back to his left. Does a great job sticking up in the hole, and he jump cuts and gets to the right. And once again, not very good tackling at all by St. Stanislaus. They did not look very good right there, bringing Lasserre down. 24-yard gain for Lasserre, and Brother Martin has a first down. I want to give you these scoring runs of Jordan Swilling. And, again, Brother Martin's just going to keep it on the ground and let some clock run. But his first touchdown was an 8-yard run, his second a 13-yard run, followed by a 2-yard run, a 40-yard run, the longest up to that point, a 9-yard run. The last two were 80 and 82 yards. So 8, 13, 2, 40, 9, 80, and 82, seven touchdowns for Bruce Jordan Swilling in the first half of the football game. And there you got a good shot of Bruce Jordan Swilling Probably finished for the evening, taking it easy, taking a breather. He's made a statement, and Coach Mark Bonice knows it. Now, Wade, when you're coaching a football team up by this much at halftime, toss to the left side, you give your quarterback an opportunity to throw the football, as he does there to Dennis Robertson. 
Well, I, I think what you got to do is you got to stay within your offense. You still want to operate within your offensive scheme, like right there. They fake the zones, and he pulls the ball, and he gets the ball out to a fine receiver in Dennis Robinson, a senior, 6'2", 165 pounds. Uh, you got to stay within yourself, stay within your game plan. You still want to operate your offense. Brogy faking the Lasea, beautiful catch for the touchdown in the end zone by Irv Smith, who as Wade told you, his dad, Irv Smith Sr., played football as a tight end for the New Orleans Saints, and boy, Irv looked like a big old tight end pulling one down there in the end zone, didn't he? Well, he's a tight end. He's 6'4", but he's but he put a great catch. Well, he's a Texas A&M commit, and uh, what he is going to be is one of those hybrid tight ends in college, yeah. where he can not only put his hand down on the ground, but they'll be able to line him up into the slot, sometimes out at the number one receiver, and be able to do some of the things that you see a guy like Jimmy Graham do. Blake Perilou in to attempt another point after to tap up and finish off a six-play, 65-yard drive. Flag is thrown late after the kick. Two minutes and 34 seconds on that drive. Let's wait and see what this flag's all about. 53 to 14. Kick was no good, by the way. I think we had a personal foul on the Rocket Shaws right there. So what they'll do is they'll mark it off against St. Stanislaus on the kickoff. All right, now they can go ahead and put the point on the board. Now they can mark it down as good. So Brother Martin scores on the first possession. Back with the Rocket Shaws football in a moment. Brother Martin, after scoring on the opening possession of the second half, will send one deep into the end zone. And as soon as it crosses that end zone, it is a dead football. So the Rocket Jaws will have it on offense in just a moment. Wednesday nights on WHNO, it's the Prep Recruiting Insider. Our series focuses on the world of high school recruiting. Rick Daly and Rene Nado take an in-depth look at the best prospects in our area, past and present, on location from Nola Motorsports Park in Avondale. It's PRI each Wednesday right here at 6 on WHNO TV 20. As a matter of fact, this week it'll be Holy Cross as the guests. Coach Eric Rabato and the Tigers of Holy Cross. Off the corner right there, you had Jordan Tafaro come in right off the edge. Nobody touched him, took Brennan down for the sack. Brother Martin said that they wanted to be able to attack the edges when they were trying to put pressure on, and they've done a pretty good job of that so far tonight. Brennan this time with a quick toss to the sideline, and good to see this young man okay because he had pulled up a little bit lame on a pass, or rather on a catch toward the end of the first half. That's Darius Pittman with the catch, big 6-3 junior. Quick wide receiver scream out to Darius Pittman. Gets the ball, gets north and south. Does a nice job with the stiff arm there. He is a fine athlete. Plays both ways. Kick returns, punt returns. It's enough to move the chains, and the first down pass is down low. Incomplete. One of the few misses right there you've seen right uh, by Miles. Uh, he was just kind of off target right there. I don't know if it slipped out of his hands. He's kind of rubbing his fingers together like sweat got to him, or maybe the ball was wet or something of that nature. Now it's that first down, pardon me, that is a fourth down call coming up. And the Rocket Chaws will put it out of bounds. So right, right now, St. Stanislaus just looks just totally out of sync because they have a much more high-powered offense than this. And I think the first half of this game just totally took something out of them. 
Well, we've got something going on on the far side of the field. Do we have a little bit of a scuffle over there? Well, you know, things are going to get kind of testing. You know, uh, uh, Stanislaus yeah, down by happening. a bunch of points, and, you know, we, you don't know exactly what's going on as far. We're not down on the field, but it looks like definitely, uh, you know, they're worked up, and uh, Brother Martin is also worked up. So well, that's Trey let's, hope, let's hope somebody is not uh, – uh, kicked out of this football game. I don't see a flag down. Now keep an eye on the referee. See if anybody does. It's only a 31-yard punt. Well, there is a flag down. They're talking it over. you got unsportsmanlike conduct against the Crusaders. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Rocket Charles. It's both going to be decline. Uh, both going to be offsetting, and then they move the ball. Lucky right there, somebody was not ejected from the football. Now game. that's what we were watching for, just to see. Coach Conades was out there making sure he was pulling his player off of that. Trey Swilling was the player involved for Brother Martin, and like and I quickly said, quickly got him out of that and, and held him back. You know, when a game gets out of hand, tempers flare both ways, and obviously it's a physical contact sport. You're going to have some tempers out there, but you've got to make sure, both coaches got to make sure that uh, their, their players understand what is sportsmanlike and what is not sportsmanlike, and then you just don't want to hurt your effort either way. Uh, you know, two outstanding institutions that uh, carry great trademarks. They want to make sure that they don't blemish those trademarks. Well, we're going to have a new quarterback now for... Brother Martin in the game. John Paul Pierce. Pierce did not see any action in the first game of the season. But we'll see him replace Brogy for a little bit. Well, uh, Brother Martin's going to get some of their kids on the field to get them some experience, some reps. Uh, I, I think you know most coaches would agree that's what they would need to do in this instance, also to make sure they try to stay away from the injuries. You definitely don't want Brogy to come up lane with a twist ankle. You definitely don't want Swilling to come up lane or Smith, some of these guys that are going to be taking you down the road. You know, uh, they're going to get ready for week number three next week. But, you know, uh, they just want to make sure they stay healthy and injury-free at this stage of the game. John Paul Pierce is a six foot, 165 pound sophomore. Might get a little bit of playing time in this game. He'll hand off on first down, and Lasserre on the carry. Very close to a first down. Eric Lasserre on the carry, Robinson on the tackle. Take a look at Brother Martin's schedule looking ahead to last week. Victory at Plaquemine last week. Now the 50 point outing tonight as they put up. 58 last week in the victory, and then Edna Carr at Tad Gormley, followed by John Curtis, and uh, Catholic League opener. It starts to get fun after that. So you get Plaquemine, Stanislaus Carr, and then look out. Hol Holy Cross will be on our air right here in five weeks on the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. And off to Lasserre. Lasserre just north and south running straight ahead. Nice tackle right there by Tommy Reeder, Tommy defensive lineman. He's a senior, 6'2", 243 for the Rocket Shaws right there, stopping the counter tray on LaSare. You know, the counter tray, you've heard me talk about this, and I'll talk about this uh, all season long on the teams that run what are called gap schemes. They're going to gap down when they block, and they're going to try to kick out the force off the edge, and they're going to try to wrap somebody around. You'll hear me talk about power O. You'll hear me talk about counter tray. Those are what you call gap schemes. Gap, 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 kick out, seal. John Paul Pierce at quarterback. Brother Martin with a lot of fresh jerseys in there right now. Hand off to Lasserre again. Lasserre just trying to find some room. But I'd like to see more than anything out of St. Stanislaus right now. Now we've got some more fisticuffs in the back. A little bit of pushing. St. Stanislaus player don't know if he did something at first, but one of the players reacted very badly. Can't tell. But now we've got a St. Uh, Stanislaus Rockachaw player down. And uh, all you could see on that one was 
one of the state status lost players backing up with his hands up. So not sure what happened. I think that was Taylor Trepania that was down. It, it was off at the edge of the screen in. We didn't get to see it. It was out of our view. But once again, things are getting a little testy out there. Both coaches need to make sure that they talk to their players. Another thing, it's the official's job to make sure he keeps thing under, things under control. Many times the official will stop the game. He'll call the captains of the two teams together, and he'll read them the rights. Say, let's make sure we keep this thing, you know, uh, sportsmanship. Now, uh, the last thing you want to do is get a player hurt in some type of crazy altercation. Lasserre on the run, nothing fancy. Or maybe get a player suspended for a big game because something ridiculous happens. And that might be what referee Frank Simmons will have to do in this game. He may be doing that right now. Nope, that's a six-minute water break. So during the water break, let's take a look at the St. Stanislaus schedule. And uh, they had opened up with Gulfport, St. Paul's, and Long Beach. Here's Brother Martin in week four. We've already explained how in Mississippi they can start the season very, very early. They do have a, uh, a bye week in there, and, and then you'll see uh, the last week of September. And then... Uh, Van Cleve, Bay, East Central, Moss Point, Pass Christiane, their 4A conference. The last five games is their district. They've got a bye before district play. They are in District 8, 4A, and again, the highest classification in Mississippi is 6A. So they have stepped up to play. Another Sacred Heart Brothers of the Sacred Heart School out of New Orleans. Bringing in big old 5A Brother Morton. And there's a lot to learn from this game for St. Stanislaus. And Wade, I want you to touch on that in just a moment, especially for a good quarterback like Miles Brennan. Here's the toss from Pierce. It's incomplete. Thrown over to the right side. And well, tended over there for Robertson. I mean, here's the bottom line. You say, well, why would uh, a 4A St. Stanislaus lost team with about 350 kids in the school take on a 5A team from Louisiana that has over 1,000 in this school? A couple of reasons. Reason number one, the Brothers of the Sacred Heart uh, unity. Playing two brother schools together, making sure there is unity amongst the two schools. And then secondly, Let's get some experience. You know, by you only gain experience by playing bigger and better people and competing with bigger, better people. And that is another reason Coach Conadis brought these guys, set up a contract with them to, in order to do this, to give their kids experience against a bigger program than that. All right, you can see Pierce. John Paul Pierce rolling out right there, trying to throw the ball uh, off the edge, trying to evade the rush, moving the pocket a little bit, and he just overthrew his receiver. That was fourth down, almost intercepted by Darius Pittman, but it didn't matter because St. Stanislaus takes over on downs anyway. But this is great experience for St. Uh, St. Uh, Miles Brennan, St. Stanislaus. For St. Stanislaus, this is great experience for them, bringing in a larger school and getting a chance to compete against a 5A school from the state of Louisiana. Brennan on the pitch finds his favorite receiver, and Chase Rogers has some positive yardage. Again, two touchdowns, one on a long run by Philip Marlowe, and then Chase Rogers uh, took a short pass from Brennan, and he did the rest for another long run, and, and that's the early scores in the first quarter for St. Stanislaus. They've moved the chains, have a first down, try the short pass to Chase Rogers, and Brother Martin stuffs it as soon as he gets it. Got Peyton Berger right there real quick on the tackle. As soon as he catches the ball, there's a nice form tackle. You know, still, St. Stanislaus needs to stay with what they do best. They do not want to get away from things that they don't want to be able to get better at each week. And one of the things they've got to be able to do is throw their passing game. Continue yes. with their solid running game. And, you know, they seem to be doing that. Great, great reception right there. Darius Pittman. And, again, Pittman, Betts, Brewer, and Chase Rogers, your four main guys. And one guy you're not hearing tonight that's hurt St. Stanislaus a little bit, and that's Carbon Blanchard, a big 6'3 junior. He's been injured. He's been out a couple of weeks, and they hope to have him back, if not by next week, the week after. Look at Miles Brennan on the run. Smart quarterback play. About to get hit. Slides down. He had the first down. Didn't need any more. Stay healthy. Right. I mean, 
as I said, smartest thing to do from the standpoint of St. Stanis loss is to make sure they can stay with their offense. And Miles Brennan is doing a good job here just continuing to move his offense down the field. Hey, 226 yards passing. He's got Pittman. He's going to get a few more right here, so he'll be over 230 yards passing right there with four minutes to play in the third quarter. He's had over 300 yards passing in all three ball games up to this point, and he's going to be approaching that in this game if they can just complete a few more. Quick screen out there. Great block by the wide receiver, number 17, Harrison Brewer, to be able to spring Pittman. Good pocket presence that time. And look at Brennan go as one of the things Coach Bill Conadies was very happy to see in his improvement in the offseason was his presence and, and the way he's been able to maneuver outside of the pocket because he could – do such a great job last year in the pocket behind uh, an experienced offensive line, but losing all five of your offensive linemen, he wanted to see Brennan be able to maneuver outside of the pocket, and he has to just dump one there so as not to be sacked. And how impressed are you as a coach at what Brennan has been able to do outside of the pocket tonight? Well, what I've seen from him, the film that I've seen off of him, and, and the things that I've seen him do tonight, under pressure with a young offensive line, evade the rush, keep his eyes down the field. I talked about that earlier in the game. Got to keep your eyes down the field because that's when you're going to complete some big gains when you have to scramble. There's your little screen coming out there, and Trapani, Trapani down inside the 10-yard line. Andrew Trapani. He's tripped up by Peyton Berger there, right there, saved the touchdown. Hey, that's the restaurant connection because Miles Brennan is the great-grandson of Owen Brennan, Brennan Restaurants in New Orleans, and Andrew Trapani's family has the big restaurant on South Beach Boulevard here in Bay St. Louis. There's another Trapani, but he's just trying to get reservations to either restaurant. Doesn't matter. Look at Miles Brennan scramble, and he'll toss into the end zone, and it is. No, he had a foot out of the end zone, I believe. Did it? He was out and came back in. That's what happened, and I think that football. Oh, Pittman, Pittman is so frustrated because his, his foot was out of the end zone, then he came back in to get it. Watch it close. Miles Brennan right here evades it, throws it up. Pittman up He's the out of the end zone. Then he steps yep. back in. His foot is out of the end zone. Yep. Forward foot, just miss it. Great athletic play right there by Miles Brennan. Yeah. So impressed with Miles Brennan. Officials will discuss this now. He had gone out. And if Should he comes be. back in, he cannot be the first to touch the football. Should be illegal participation. And loss of down, I loss believe. Of down. Yeah, and that might be what the officials are discussing. There's no doubt about what happened in the end zone. And Frank Simmons, our referee, again, Mississippi High School Association. Oh, they picked it up. They picked pick the, the flag, flag up. up. When it's a touchdown, right? So the question is, is it a touchdown? No, incomplete pass because his foot was out pass. of the his foot was, was down out of the end zone. All right. So there <laughs> okay. Should have been illegal participation. I'm gotta check that one. Brennan's gonna throw over the middle. Zips one over the middle, and that's a score to Chase Rogers. Touchdown. Rogers second touchdown of this game and there you see in a little bit of the St. Stanislaus offensive power we were looking for uh, in the second quarter. Tell you what, he puts that ball on a rope right there, just drills it in right there and hits Rogers right in his hands. I think Rogers' hands should be a little sore catching some of this guy's passes because I tell you what, this guy can put it on a rope. He's got a big-time arm, quick delivery. I tell you what, in a few years, we're going to be hearing about this guy at the next level. Hey, Cal's offered both Rogers and quarterback Brennan a scholarship already in their junior year. Nice touchdown, Miles Brennan to Chase Rogers. Brother Martin still with the big lead. 242 to play third quarter. It's an offensive shot.
That is the kick by St. Stanislaus. And here comes Brother Martin on the return. And as they do, this is 911. A lot of patriotism, a lot of remembrances, a lot of, a lot of things in the minds of people on this day. Let's go downstairs to Stephanie Altman with a special story about 911. Thank you, Ken. Now, while our entire nation remembers the 14th anniversary of 9-11 this weekend, this tragedy hits very close to home for Brother Martin's athletic director, Scott Williams, whose father, Lewis Williams, was killed in the attack. Lewis was attending a business meeting on the 78th floor of the South Tower when the second plane struck. To his friends last night on Facebook, Scott said that family and faith are the four most important things in our journey. Everything else is a distant third. The Williams family are short in our thoughts and prayers this weekend, as well as everyone else affected by this tragedy. Back to you, Ken and Wade. Well, here goes LaSare on a touchdown. No, it's not Bruce Jordan Swilling. It's just another weapon in the Brother Martin Arsenal. Eric LaSare, the sophomore, touchdown, long touchdown run. Well, we've seen that play before, except we saw it out at number nine. It's the... Uh, it's the power O, and he hits it right up the middle, and uh, poor tackling, and he takes it the length, and uh, he shows his speed. He's got a little uh, giddy up in his step. He's going to be the future of uh, the Brother Martin running backs as um, he and uh, Bruce Jordan Swilling will handle those duties next year again also. LaSare already 127-yard rushing on eight carries. That's his first TD of the season. All of that coming in the third quarter as he replaced, as he replaced Bruce Jordan Swilling, who had 343. 470 yards for the top two running backs for Brother Martin in this game against St. Stanislaus with two minutes and 19 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Well, it's been a it's been a huge running show tonight by Brother Martin. I mean, uh, you know, you got to credit a lot of things. So obviously, the running backs, and uh, but you also have to credit that offensive line. And we still have a quarter to play, two nineteen left to go in the third. Um, you know, the thing that's got to happen here is Stanislaus has got to be able to find some um, some defense somewhere within this next quarter because that's going to have to lead them into the rest of the season. And, yeah. you know, granted enough, everybody's going to get this game film, and I'm sure uh, it'll get broken down real well by their future opponents on their uh, schedule. And, and, you know, they're going to run the ball right at them. Got to stop the run. They're having trouble doing that tonight, and that was one of the keys to the game. Yes, without question. And if you joined us late, Bruce Jordan swilling 343 yards in the first half. That is a Brother Morton game record that he set in the first half on 19 rushes. Seven touchdowns. That is a Brother Martin record for a game. Dante Butler had the old record of 305 yards and five TDs. His touchdown runs were for 8, 13, 2, 40, 9 yards, 80, and 82. It was the Bruce Jordan Swilling Show in the first half. 61 to 21. We have 82 points scored in this game and we weren't kidding when we said we might approach. Flag down, out of bounds. Ball hit out of bounds. But we said we'd approach 100 points, and the scoreboard would be lighting up. And sure enough, it is. And I'm still expecting St. Stanislaus to break 30 in this game. I mean, they've done it all year long. I think they can do it again. Uh, they have an offense that can score, as I said, in a flash. Great receivers, outstanding quarterback, and a young, maturing offensive line. They're going to elect to take the ball at the 35. We've got to remember that your choice off the kickoff in high school is if the ball goes out of bounds, you can either re-kick, back it up five yards, and re-kick, or take the ball at the 35-yard line. I like this. I like this choice to. because, look, you're playing a 5A school. You're a 4A school in a 6A uh, a state that's got the highest division, the 6. you got a great quarterback. He's got good field position. Let him operate. Let, let him put some more points on the board. Well, I, well, wait, we've got Jacob Greer at quarterback now in place of Miles Brennan. So Jacob Greer, new quarterback, and he will throw, and he's got a man on first down. 
So we've got a catch to quarter gains. We're, we're actually seeing uh, St. Stanislaus come in with some new jerseys. Jacob Breer. Well, you know, wise move. Get some of your backups some uh, playing time. Make sure that uh, they get some reps under their belt because if something would happen down the road, they've got to be able to operate and continue on to play too. Trace Rhodes is the running back in place of Marlowe. And this pass intended out there for our receiver. A little bit uh, too high. Well, Greer sprints to his left, just overthrows the receiver. Didn't quite get his shoulders around, attack the line of scrimmage to be able to deliver the pass. You go to your left, you're a right-handed quarterback. you got to get your shoulders around. you got to get him towards the line of scrimmage so you can load and throw. And they are going to throw this one again just a little bit too high for Jacob Breer, the sophomore quarterback, getting himself just a little bit of playing time now. Well, I think it's a smart move by Coach Bill Conadies. You know, get his younger guys, especially his backup quarterback, some reps because you never know what happens down the road. You can't operate if you don't have some experience as a backup. Always get your backup some reps. Well, he's throwing right now to a guy, young man named Taylor Nikes. He's number 25, and they're going to have to punt the football away. Again, Brother Martin said they might not have anybody back. They'd rather defend the fourth down throw, especially with a big lead, than send somebody back to return the punt, and that's another 53-yard punt. This one kicked by Jacob Greer. So Brother Martin getting ready to put that ball into play, and as they do, this gives us an opportunity to tell you that Brother Martin and St. Stanislaus fans, Mellow Mushroom will donate 10% of your order to your school's athletics department through Saturday night. Stop by the Metairie or Covington locations, tell your server, and give back to your school with the best pizza in town. And don't forget, stay mellow at Mellow Mushroom. So again, a lot of uh, fresh white jerseys in there for the Crusaders. And this is John Paul Pierce remaining at quarterback with 15 seconds to play in the third quarter. So the third quarter winding down, Brother Morton doesn't have to snap the ball. They can let it run out in the third quarter, and I think they will. They will let it run down. Three, two, one. We have played three quarters here at uh, Rockachaws Stadium Saint, at St. Stanislaus. Brother Morton in control by 40. Today's game is being presented by First NBC Bank, providing real customer service and relationship banking. Now with 35 locations throughout Southeast Louisiana and the Florida Panhandle, First NBC Bank member FDIC. We had a fumble on the play. Fumble on the play recovered by Carson Rogers, number 92 from Stanislaus. A poor mesh right there. That usually happens. Probably not getting a lot of reps. Uh, poor mesh, put the ball on the ground. Carson Rogers falls on it for the Stanislaus in their scoring position. And he is going to stay with Jacob Greer at quarterback. Resting Miles Brennan. Now Greer's been trying to hook up with Nikes. He's going to toss. He's got any case this time, but any case is driven out of bounds near the 10 yard line. And again, this is a young man in a St. Stanislaus uniform that the coaches are extremely high on. 
They just think he has all the potential to just bust out and really make something happen. It's only a ninth career. grader. Yeah, a freshman. And, and they just think that, you know, before this freshman year is out, he's going to be playing and adding something special to this team. Well, they're going to bring really, him along. really high on that young man. They're going to bring him along slowly, make sure he gets the reps. This is the perfect opportunity for him to get some reps. So that way, as things progress the rest of the season, they can work him into the lineup. Will Greer on that last catch. What I like, I like what I'm seeing right now to Stanislaus Ken. They're staying with their offense with their younger kids. Yep, they surely are. This is Delvin Henry's first carry of the ball game. So again, St. Stanislaus, you're right. Given this is all new kids, young young kids here. Uh, Henry, a freshman. We've seen Trace Rhodes, a freshman. Nikase, a freshman. All getting some time against, hey, a big 5A school from New Orleans. Right, and there's a lot of new jerseys out there for Brother Martin. They're getting a lot of reps, too. So what you're seeing now is... Has, Fourth it, down. It's equated itself into... Here's Nikase. Uh, Can he get to the end zone? It's a race, and Brother Martin stops him. What you're seeing is now is that it's equating into a, a JV game. Where the, it's just two, two junior varsities out there on the field. The future of the two programs getting some really positive, positive reps so these guys will have some experience down the road. Well, you just, again, watch the Jacob, the Greers, and, uh, uh, again, the knee cases as we talk about them now. You'll hear about them a lot more. There was a flag on that last play that's still down. Is that a flag, or did somebody just drop a towel down there? Yeah, it looks like somebody ate a hamburger and left the paper down there. <laughs> now, what it might have been. I thought the <laughs> officials were standing over a flag, but not to happen. So Pierce remains at quarterback, and Brother Martin will just keep it on the ground, and they're just going to run clock. Nothing fancy right here. That's new running back Kevin Casey. He's running outside zone stretch. Let me talk about that play for a minute. You've heard me say this over and over again. It's, it's, it's the brother to the inside stretch, but they're trying to bounce the ball outside. You can see right here out of the pistol formation, he's trying to take it off tackle. Now what you're teaching that running back to do is he's running downhill on that path is when he comes to the first mountain, meaning that he can't go anymore at that angle, he's going to stick his foot in the ground, he's going to climb and go north and south and try to make positive yards. And he's going north and south right now, Kevin Casey. And what I like to see about this more than anything, wait, Casey is a senior. You know, he's been on this team for a while. He's practiced hard. Doesn't get the opportunity to get in there and get a lot of playing time. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Get, it's getting in there as a senior and getting some playing time right now. And maybe, maybe we'll get a whole quarter out of this. Well, the thing about it also is it's not only the chance to play as a senior sitting behind two other pretty good running backs. It's a chance to get out there and show his leadership skills as a senior. And it's and it's awesome that, you know, high school coaches do that sort of thing. You know, kudos to Coach Bonice of getting one of his uh, seniors on the field that doesn't normally get a lot of reps. It's an awesome thing to do. On first down, as Martin had moved the chains, they'll just keep it down on the ground. And again, you can be a pretty good running back at Brother Martin, but if you're sitting behind Bruce Jordan Swilling <laughs> and Eric Lasser, it's pretty tough to get some playing time. Yes, it is. I mean, let's, you know, let's face it. That's a good shot of Mark Bonice right there. And uh, walking up and down the boundary, getting his guys, you know, as much playing time, his younger guys as much playing time as they possibly can. Brother Martin, of course, nothing fancy right here because they just want to run clock and do not want to run up the score at all. But uh, what are you trying to do with your younger players here? Well, you run your offense. These are the things that they've been taught in spring training. These are the things that they've been taught in uh, the uh, uh, offseason in the summer and taught in camp in preseason. It's about running your bread and butter, running your offense out of your base formations and letting these guys get a chance to get better. Base formations on offense and defense. John Paul Pierce at quarterback, and he's going to keep and run around the right side. A little stiff arm by John Paul Pierce before being run out of bounds. Number eight, uh, John Paul Pierce on the carry for the uh, Crusaders. This copyrighted telecast is the first NBC Bank Prep Showcase. May not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any other form without the express written consent of WHNO TV 20. 
I mean, that's, that's what they're doing. And, and as I told you, they're staying with their base packages and getting these guys a chance to get the reps doing what they know and what is their bread and butter. That's it, and bread and butter is oh, running the football. Kevin Casey on that run again. And the senior. Right there. It's counter Trey. I told you all night long, this is about the fifth or sixth time I've called this play as far as what it is. It's counter Trey. So that's one of their bread and butter running plays. So what are they doing with their young kids? They're running counter Trey. Getting better at it. Bunch of young offensive linemen in there. So, you know, they're getting a chance to run counter Trey. Hydration break. Water timeout. We'll take one here. Be back in just a moment with the final 559 of this game. Campus of St. Stanislaus right on Bay St. Louis in New Orleans. You know it when you cross the Bay St. Louis Bridge. We're about a half mile in, a little bit off campus on Booker Street. This stadium has been here for a long time. As you heard earlier, Doc Blanchard ran on this very field. Well, you know, little history, St. Stanislaus, if you think about it, what they have had to overcome. They've had to rebuild the school a couple of times because of hurricanes, yep. and they're right where they're, the, the brothers built the school and have persevered. Here goes Kevin Casey, pushed out of bounds. Did a great Casey! job of staying inbounds back at around the 30-yard line. Did the tightrope it. And then is pushed out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Watch this tightrope move upfield a little bit on a 37-yard gain by Casey. Well, I'll tell you what. I like this Casey young man. He's a hard-nosed kid. He's, he's taking the reps and making the most of it. And, and that's, that's awesome. That is just a great thing to see. He's running hard. He's competing hard. He's making the most of every chance he gets a chance to touch the ball. Another quarterback in there now for Brother Martin, and we've got to push forward. This is Brandon Abair, the six-foot junior, quarterbacking the Crusaders. So we've seen a little bit of John Paul Pierce now. Brandon Abair, Jake Brogy, Bruce Jordan Swilling, Eric Lasser. Those guys are done for the evening with 61 points on the board. And for Bruce Jordan Swilling, records galore on yards gained and Touchdown scored in a single game. Brother Martin records. Kevin Casey up the middle, and he is inside the five-yard line. Zone stretch. Runs to the mountain, plants the foot, sticks it, and gets north and south. That's the coaching points. Those are the coaching points on the outside stretch game or the outside zone stretch. Kevin Casey, you're hard to carry. Tell you what, this young man runs hard. See if they're going to try to give him the ball again. I don't, think he's, I don't think he's winded. I think... It looked like when he went down, he didn't go down right, and he was either slow to get up, not, not quite sure, but. But he's not coming out. Look at him. He I wants the ball. He, he's, a, he's a senior. He wants the ball, doesn't want to come out, wants to get into the end zone. There's the dive into the end zone. Touchdown, Kevin Casey. He got it, man. How's that for a senior year play by the running back? I tell you what, that that that's great. You know, Coach Bonice just kept calling his number and calling his number and yes. calling his number. Gave the young man an opportunity, and he gets a chance to put one into the end zone. Something that he'll remember for the rest of his life, scoring uh, as a senior in a Brother Martin uniform. Kudos to the Brother Martin offensive staff, as well to this young, or excuse me, this uh, young man, this senior, Kevin Casey. Extra point attempt by Martin is up and good. And this one put up by Daniel Benitez. 68 to 21, Brother Martin. 349 left when we come back.
Now Benitez to kick. Brother Morton in control of this one over St. Stanislaus. And again, if you're looking at the score and going, wow, remember, too, that Brother Martin is 5A New Orleans and St. Stanislaus is 4A in Mississippi. And we might have a nice return by the Crusaders on the far side. Trace Rhodes on the return. If you're interested in purchasing a DVD copy of today's game, send an email to prep at sportsnola.com or call our offices at 504-681-0120. During normal business hours, you will receive a reply with more information on purchasing the DVDs. So again, we've got Greer, Jacob Greer at quarterback, and he'll toss it out to the right side to Delvin Henry. Nice tackle right there by Adam Melito. Coming off the block, running down. The Rockshaw running back off the swing pass. Good form tackle right there by Melito. Without question. And you're not seeing anything fancy right now. You're not seeing anything fancy right now by St. Stanislaus either. All they want to do is run some clock and I think make sure nobody gets hurt the rest of the way too. WHNO thanks ABC Rental Centers for their support of today's game. ABC Rental has serviced the Mississippi Gulf Coast for more than 45 years. For your equipment party or wedding rentals needs, contact one of their three locations or visit abcrentals.com. And here's Greer's toss, incomplete. Just a little bit off target right there. Almost had him, a little bit behind him. Intended for Carter Gaines. It's great effort right there. Stood in against the rush. It's nice to see a young quarterback always do that. Stands in there against the rush. Delivers the football on time. Just a little bit off target. And I really like that Coach Connodies is doing right now. Is, is Look, you've got Miles Brennan. You've got one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And you've got to have another quarterback ready just in case this young man would get injured, pull up with a cramp, uh, have his helmet pop off and have to come out for a down. You've just got to be ready for these kind of things. And again, with uh, St. Stanislaus kicking their quarterback kick out of a regular formation, Brother Martin has chosen all game not to have anybody back to return the punts to protect against the possible uh, fake punt on fourth down and pass play for a first down. 123 left in this game. Well, you know, both teams got a lot out of this tonight, okay? Let me let me tell you what Brother Martin got out of this besides just the, sh the George Swilling show in the, in, in the first half. It's going on the road and competing. Yes. All right? Because you have to do that. You need to teach your team how to, how to handle game day, that they've got to get on a bus, prepare themselves to be able to travel, even though it's, you know, what, 45 minutes to an hour. A, a, a team in the city of New Orleans doesn't do that much. Correct. You know, they, they're, they're going over to Gormley. They're playing right there local. Well, they're getting ready for the playoffs because they're going to be in the playoffs in Division One in the state of Louisiana. Okay? So what's going to end up taking place is this is going to help them for traveling in the playoffs. New quarterback for the Crusaders in there. And staff is bobbled. Just run around, try to make something happen. And in the final couple of plays of this one, back there is Brady Faust, 5'9", a freshman, 5'9", 136 pounds, a little freshman quarterback in safety, getting a chance to take a couple of snaps in the final few minutes of this one. And let me tell you, let me tell you what Stane Stanislaus gets out of this. I've already said that. They get a chance to step up and play against a 5A program from the city of New Orleans, you know, traditionally that is, is a powerhouse in the city. I, and they get a chance to step in there and try to play toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys, and they did some good things tonight. You know, They missed on a few miscues with the ball inside the 20-yard line, but other than that, they put 21 points up on Brother Mark. They're going to be able to take this as a learning experience. Coach Connodies will do that this week, and they'll put it behind them, correct their mistakes that they had, especially the tackling, fix it, and get ready for their game next week. Brandon Abair came in for one snap. He ran a play now. Brady Faust is back in to run a play. The freshman in there to run a play, and that should be the last play of the game. We are down to 13, 12 seconds. And well said. That's exactly what each team gets out of this game, and that's the way you've got to look at it. 
So it's a, it's a positive on both sides. Nobody ever wants to get the loss, but I tell you what, St. Stanis lost. The Rocket Shaws got something out of this game tonight, and that's the way they need to look at it. It's a building block for them. 68-21. to 21. Brother Martin, the winner, goes to 2-0 and on the year, and uh, St. Stanislaus falls to 1-3. and three. Let's take a break. We'll be back with our post-game show right after this from St. Stanislaus. A big winner, 68 to 21 with St. Stannis was tonight. Let's go down to Stephanie Altman, who has Brother Martin coach Mark Bonice with her. Thank you, Ken. I'm here with head coach Mark Bonice. Coach, great win tonight. Talk about how proud you are of these boys. Proud of our kids um, coming into to St. Stannis Laws. They've got, got a storied program here. It's our brother's school, so it was um, you know it was a big, a nice little rivalry for us. But you know they're 2014 state uh, champion runner-up. So uh, we knew we were going to come down here. We face. Great quarterback, um, and we got some great skill receivers. Um, I thought our defense did some good things. They faced some adversity with tempo, um, so we came out here and we did some things. Very proud of our kids. They had a good week of practice, and that's what we stressed from last week to this week. If you practice well, you can come out and perform well, and I thought they did a good job. 
And I know great effort by everyone, but how proud of you of your junior running back, Bruce Jordan Swelling? I mean, I don't know the exact exact yards and exact touchdowns, but he did something I mean, I mean crazy tonight. He's an amazing, uh, amazing player. He's being coached by... I guess the player who had all the records before tonight, um, and Dante Butler, uh, Coach Butler's doing a great job of coaching him up. If Bruce continues to listen to coaching, um, he's going to be one of, the, one of the best backs to ever come out of state of Louisiana, I believe. And uh, But, you know, the other thing that, that needs to be noted is the fact that Bruce did a great job tonight, but guys down the field, guys in, in you know, uh, the, the offense line did a great job of blocking for him. Obviously. Well, congratulations, Coach. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you, Ken and Wade. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And, and again, uh, Dante Butler had five, but Bruce Jordan Swilling, he had seven touchdowns tonight, two, eight, nine, 13, 40, 80, and 82 yards. His uh, 19 rushes for 343 yards and those seven touchdowns. School records all set in the first half. You know, we said we might get 100 points. Well, it wasn't 100 points, but it was a bonanza on every other, in every other offensive way. Total of 1,000 yards offense tonight. Kim. On the nose. 1,000 yards on the nose. 677 yards for Brother Martin. 564 of that is rushing. 113 passing. For St. Stanislaus, 72 yards rushing. 251 yards passing for a total of 323 yards. There's the man right there. Bruce, Bruce George Jordan Swilling, number nine. Broke Brother Martin rushing records tonight in the first half. What a phenomenal player. Awesome offensive display. And we did get to see Miles Brennan do something special. Chris Rogers had two touchdowns of 12 and 72 yards. And Marlowe, the running back, a 59-yard run. Uh, just too much firepower by Brother Martin, uh, especially for a Class 4A school in Mississippi, uh, struggling with defense as they were. You're going to see great things out of Miles Brennan down the road. He's not only going to have a great junior year this year, he'll be recruited by everybody around the country. He's going to have a great senior year next year. He is a phenomenal quarterback. Well, thank you very much, uh, Wade Kaiser. Appreciate that. I had a lot of fun with this game, and I know you did too. So this was a real fun game.